It's the morning of July 6th, 2022, and emergency services have descended on an address in Norton Shores, Michigan. Reports had come in that a 15-year-old boy, Timothy Ferguson, had stopped breathing. Timothy's mother, Shonda Vander Ark, told the responding officer that at around 5.30 a.m., Timothy had fallen off his bunk bed, which was in the basement of the property. She said he appeared to be okay, but the next time she checked on him, a couple of hours later, he had stopped breathing, so she called 911. Hello, ma'am. I'm Officer Stefanich. Right now, we got some people coming over to talk to you, okay? You have another son inside the house? I have two. Yeah. Are they sleeping still right now? One of them is, yeah. The Uh-oh. 20-year-old's awake. He's 20? No, the 20-year-old's awake. Okay. Uh, now, you said the last time you saw him was 5.30 this morning? Yeah. Did he say anything? He had fallen out of bed. At 5.30? Yeah. You sure it wasn't... <laughs> earlier? I mean, it's possible. I thought it was 5.30, but I wasn't super awake. I heard a thump, and I came down, and he's kind of laying on his side, kind of like, what the heck? And, um, and I picked, I, uh, I, yeah, I reached out, and he, he, I'm sorry. That's all right. Sorry. Oh, my God. There was something about Timothy that immediately stood out to both law enforcement and medical staff. He was skinny. In fact, he weighed just 69 pounds on July 6th, 2022. Just half of what he was supposed to weigh. No, that's why I made, that's why I asked him to eat last night because his face started looking a little thin. I'm like, okay, Mm -hmm. enough. And he wouldn't show, I'm like, let me see, hold your shirt up. And he wouldn't hold his shirt up. He wouldn't do anything. Did he get real skinny last time too? Yes. The only reason I know is because my, uh, my seven-year-old walked in on him accidentally when he was in the shower downstairs. Uh-huh. And then my seven-year-old comes up and he's like, Mama, Timothy's really skinny. I was like, oh. Was that this time or last time? That was last That was like first week of February is when DC discovered that. Mm-hmm. And I told him he was either going to start eating every, multiple times a day or I was taking him to the hospital and he didn't want to go to the hospital. So he, was, so he ended up eating on his own. Yes. Yeah. It's almost like you're in a daze. Like, you don't know what's real and what's not. Have you, have you been talking to him at all recently? I talked to him yesterday morning to get him up. That was um, right, right basically when it started. Before. Okay, so how long ago was that? Did you, did you know that he was in this hunger strike? I think I... Huh? Yeah, I, I mean, did I tell you or not? I don't know if I did or not. Because he's, he's skin and bone. I know, and I just, how did he He's, he's voice? really. Well, he, he, he doesn't communicate with him hardly at all. Like, they say hi, and they don't, yeah, he's. Are you guys full brothers or half brothers? Well, they're full. The only half is the one that's in there. Okay. Shonda and her 20-year-old son, Paul Ferguson, Timothy's biological brother, were questioned about this hunger strike theory and how they, two adults, couldn't spot the signs that he was so skinny and on the verge of, well, death. They both downplayed their response to Timothy's alleged hunger strike. Shonda, on the one hand, said she didn't realise how serious the hunger strike was, especially as of recent, because Timothy had been wearing baggy clothes. Therefore, she couldn't tell that he was skin and bones. Paul, on the other hand, stated that he rarely spoke to his brother, so he definitely wouldn't have opened up about what issues he had going on. And so this looked like a tragic case of a young boy who wouldn't open up to his family about his inner demons and decided to starve himself to death. However, that was far from the truth. If you couldn't tell by now, both Shonda and Paul were lying to police. And what you're about to hear in this video might just be one of the most shocking cases of child abuse you've ever heard. If you're not familiar with this story, you may be asking yourself, where was Timothy's father in all of this? Well, believe it or not, he was involved in Timothy's life up until 2021, just a year before his death. In 1999, Shonda and a man by the name of Eric Ferguson tied the knot. Over the next seven years, they'd have four children. 
Eric Jr., born in March of 2000, Paul, born in April of 2002, Millie, born in June of 2004, and finally Timothy, born in August of 2006. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma is where the family called home. To family and friends, it looked as if the kids had an amazing life. One look at Shonda's Facebook posts paints a picture of a caring mother who would die for her children, but would she though? You see, behind the scenes, something else was taking place, an entirely different story. Now, we don't know specifics, it's unclear if details will ever be released to the public, but we do know that as early as December of 2009, the Child Protective Services were involved with the family, and all four children were removed from the care of both Shonda and Eric. By early 2010, all children were removed from the custody of Child Protective Services and had been placed with either family or friends. After 13 years of marriage, Shonda and Eric decided to call it a day and got a divorce. Although it should be noted that the two had split not too long after the children were removed from their care. A fierce showdown in court would take place in 2012 as they entered a custody battle for the children. The result? Well, not one that you might expect. Eric won the case after Shonda voluntarily waived all rights over to him. In the end, she left the home and was granted just three hours per month visitation for all four children. Now, you've got to ask yourself, why was the judge so harsh? Why did they only grant Shonda just three hours of visitation per month for all four children? Would it be because the CPS were previously involved with the family and it was due to Shonda's actions against at least one of her children? If you thought that, you wouldn't be reaching at all. Eric had been in a relationship with a different woman, Patricia, during his marriage with Shonda. The two also had children together. In fact, some of the children were older than the ones he shared with Shonda. When Shonda was out of the picture, all of Eric's children from both relationships lived under one roof, including Timothy. This is how Timothy's older half-sister described him. Timothy was severely autistic but high-functioning. He could take care of himself but did not like to be touched, talked to, or loud noises. My parents put a lock on his closet door because he would go in there and urinate. He did that because he was scared of the bathroom, especially at night. Timothy was unable to understand simple concepts. If you tried to explain to him why he couldn't do something, he wouldn't understand. He would eat excessively but didn't understand why it would make him sick. To manage these behaviours at home, Timothy was in therapy. My parents received help from psychiatrists and from his school. They also had house rules and a reward system. There were never any restrictions on Timothy eating or getting snacks. My mother went above and beyond for Timothy. She really tried to help him. My dad wasn't in the picture because he worked all the time and wouldn't help. Timothy didn't just have autism though. You see, he had been diagnosed with a wide range of disabilities, including bipolar disorder, ADHD, sensory processing disorder, which was the hyposensitive type, and had speech and motor impairment. Due to these conditions, he had to attend a mix of special education and regular classes at school. While attending middle school, Timothy's teachers felt that he was being neglected at home. Not physically abused, but not taken care of properly given the circumstances. The school were concerned about Timothy's well-being. School staff, including myself, suspected neglectful behaviour at the home, although there were never any signs of physical abuse. We had to give Timothy showers several times a week at school and provide him with clean clothes. 2021, Timothy is close to finishing his first year of high school. Teacher, Nancy Diaz, reports he's come a long way. By that point, he's attending more regular classes than special ed ones. He was caring, cooperative, smart, and always wanted to help others. However, ladies and gentlemen, even though Timothy had made all this progress at school, teachers still felt that he was being somewhat neglected at home. I had a feeling he was the black sheep of the family and school was his safe place. We'll never truly know what was happening within the Ferguson household. On the one hand, reports from Timothy's half-sister state that he was being taken care of, but the school didn't think so. 
The school's opinion on the issue wouldn't matter moving forward though because out of nowhere, just weeks before he was due to finish the ninth grade, Patricia approached the school to tell them that Timothy was permanently moving to Michigan to live with his mother. Staff were confused as Shonda had never been mentioned in previous discussions. Near the end of Timothy's time with my mother, she went to my father and said that she needed help because she was getting overwhelmed by his needs at home and was becoming depressed. My dad's solution was to send Timothy to live with Shonda. And so, Timothy Ferguson's bags would be packed and he'd be shipped over to Michigan to stay with his mother, his stepfather, Adam van der Ark, his brother Paul, who had moved there one year prior, and his younger brother, who we'll call G for privacy purposes, as he remains a child as of recording this video. Just a year on from this move, Timothy Ferguson would sadly be pronounced dead in the basement of the property. So what exactly went down? That Shonda van der Ark in March of 2020, introing her first YouTube video with her service dog, Gemini. She struggled to maintain proper blood sugar levels, and so he was there to assist. The channel followed Shonda's life, her day to day. It also included some dog related reviews, the process of training other service dogs, and her law school journey. For those of you who aren't aware, Shonda at this point was training to become a lawyer. She would eventually pass her bar exam, scoring the second highest out of her classmates. Following her graduation, she worked as a law clerk for a Nuego County judge. Roughly 680 miles from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, sits Huntsville, Alabama. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the birthplace of none other than Shonda van der Ark. Shonda's early years consisted of an unstable home. This resulted in her and her sister Paige spending roughly two years in foster care. While in care, both were subjected to abuse. For example, the pair weren't given an adequate amount of food and liquids. Rather, they had to eat small amounts of bread and were only allowed small sips of water or milk. They also received punishment in the form of ice baths and were physically assaulted. Those caring for the girls would beat them with clothes hangers and ping pong paddles. This doesn't excuse at least Shonda's behavior moving forward. She was a self-entitled, controlling, potential sociopath. So why does Paige describe Shonda in this way? Well, according to her, back when she was a teen, she felt pregnant and Shonda didn't like that one bit. There's no way her younger sister could have a child before her, and to be pregnant out of wedlock was a huge no-no. Have a guess what Shonda did. She attacked Paige and struck her in the abdomen. Paige would be rushed to the emergency room after complaining of pain in her stomach area. Sadly, she would miscarry seven weeks later. It's unconfirmed if that was the result of the attack. And if you thought that was shocking, you haven't heard anything yet because believe it or not, when Paige fell pregnant for the second time, Shonda attempted to assault her once again, but failed as Paige's boyfriend intervened. It hadn't just been Eric Ferguson who was seeing another person during his marriage with Shonda because she had also been seeing another man. Enters Adam van der Ark. Adam met Shonda through a dating website around the time her children were removed from her custody. The two were said to have hit it off instantly. So much in fact, that not long after they had begun talking, Adam decided to relocate from his home in Michigan to go to Oklahoma to be closer to Shonda. However, in the autumn of 2014, the pair moved back to Adam's hometown in Michigan due to Shonda giving birth to their son, who again, for privacy reasons, will have to call G. Life at the Van der Ark home in Michigan to begin with was relatively normal. There were no reported issues. Child Protective Services weren't involved with G. Shonda and Adam had a healthy relationship and the family would often go on days out, according to some Facebook posts from around this time. At some point in 2020, Paul Ferguson, now an adult, made the move to Michigan to get to know his mother a bit more. It was a fresh start. Granted, he had spent multiple years with Shonda as a child, but now he was an adult. The situation was slightly different. Don't forget, he also had a brother who he could only meet on occasion, but now he got to live with him. It should be noted though that his half-sister would say that he was immature and made the move because Shonda still treated him like a child. 
He didn't want to be an adult. He wanted everyone to take care of him, and that's what Shonda did. It's May 2021, and Timothy Ferguson has been forced to live with his mother and stepfather because his father and stepmother can't deal with him for much longer. Timothy's father advised that he could no longer handle him and threatened to place him in foster care if me and Shonda didn't take him. When Timothy arrived, he had been on a bunch of medication for his disabilities. They would put him in a zombie-like state, so even if he wanted to, he couldn't misbehave because the meds calmed him down. However, Shonda wouldn't register him with a doctor, and so he went back to his usual self over the next couple of months. By August, Timothy was sneaking food into his room in the early hours of the morning and was full of energy. Adam, who took care of him during the day while Shonda went out to work, never had an issue with Timothy's behavior though. In fact, he believed that Eric and Shonda were overreacting. Timothy didn't exhibit any behavior issues out of the ordinary for a teenage boy. Shonda had also failed to register Timothy with the school, opting to homeschool him instead. Her reasoning? Well, she said that Timothy had broken a laptop at his previous school, and Eric hadn't paid the money to cover the damages. So when she asked his old school for records to be sent over so he could apply for a new school, they wouldn't do so until the money was paid. And for some reason, instead of just covering the costs, she decided to homeschool him instead. A single camera would be placed on Timothy's desk under his bunk bed as a part of this homeschool setup, so he could be observed doing his schoolwork. For those of you who aren't aware, Adam had been wheelchair bound, and so the camera would allow him to keep an eye on Timothy, as his room was in the basement of the property. And so, there isn't much else to say other than the home was a healthy environment for children to grow up in. But in 2022, that would all change when tragedy hit. In January of 2022, Adam van der Ark would sadly suffer from a stroke. The incident completely changed the family dynamic. He fortunately survived, however, was now bedbound. That meant then that Shonda wouldn't be able to take care of him if she needed to go to work. And Paul, well, he was Paul. He barely took care of himself. Do you really think he stepped up to offer to help with Adam? No. The answer's no. So the decision was made to move Adam to his parents' home. That way, he could receive around-the-clock care. The stroke had placed a huge financial burden on the family. Adam's disability checks, along with Shonda's income, gave them a comfortable life. But with him now out of the picture, Paul had to pick up a minimum wage job. The money coming in when he found work was just enough to live off. Even though both Shonda and Paul were employed, there was always at least one adult in the house to watch the children. Paul watched over them in the mornings and afternoons, Shonda in the evenings. Adam leaving the home would mark the beginning of the end of Timothy's life as he knew it. Moving forward, he would be treated as a prisoner in his own home and would fall victim to horrific abuse at the hands of his mother, Shonda van der Ark, and his brother, Paul Ferguson. The abuse would ultimately lead to his death within just a few months. Shonda was the mastermind, Paul the enforcer. The abuse began with heavy-handedness and locks in places where food was stored because, remember, Timothy would take food from the kitchen and sneak it into his room. Before long, cameras and motion detectors were set up around the entire house. Even Timothy had a motion detector attached to him. That way, Shonda could keep an eye on what he was doing at home while she was at work. Shonda wasn't professional while she was working. I observed that she was always on her phone or laptop while she was supposed to be doing her work while court was in session. It appeared to me at the time that she was doing too much personal business on her cell phone when she was supposed to be working. I wanted to report that I had been told by a co-worker that Shonda had been on her phone because she was monitoring her children who were at home through a surveillance camera system that was connected to her phone. The co-worker explained that they had overheard Shonda yelling at her children over the phone whenever she saw them leaving their room. This would occur in the middle of the day. So, as you can see, Shonda was that fixated with what Timothy was doing at home that it clashed with her work. 
And while we're on the topic of leaving their room, remember how Timothy had been in a room in the basement? Well, when the abuse started, Timothy had been made to spend most of the day in a closet within that room. He had to sleep in there as well. The closet had an alarm attached to the door, so if he left, Shonda would be notified. The space consisted of a tarp sheet on the floor, and that was it. There was no entertainment, bedding, blankets, or pillows. Believe it or not, the tarp sheet had been left there because Timothy would often use it as a place to go to the bathroom. You see, he was only allowed to use the normal toilet for a certain amount of time. For example, if he needed to go for a number one, he would have to be finished within one minute. If he needed a number two, he would have to be finished within two minutes. If he spent any more time in the bathroom than what was allowed, he would be handed a severe punishment. Those same punishments were also handed down for various other reasons. The punishments came in the form of running up and down a flight of stairs in the garden for extended periods of time, partially naked in all weathers, spending hours in an ice bath, having to ingest hot sauce, but not just any old hot sauce. We're talking an award-winning 800,000 Scoville units hot sauce. He would also have to stand in the corner of the closet while naked for hours. And finally, he would have to wear hand and leg cuffs. The closet was a literal prison cell. Timothy tried to sneak food again. I yelled at him, and then he became momentarily unresponsive. And then I saw this. He's bone thin, mom. I think we need to actually feed him. Kay, give him bread, please. I hear you. Give PB sandwiches and water. The unresponsiveness is probably fake, but I see what you mean. That was a message exchange between Paul Ferguson and Shonda van der Ark on June 13th, 2022, six months into the abuse. Timothy was a healthy weight for his age when he arrived in Michigan in 2021. However, after six months of abuse, he became skinny and weak. Why did he shed all this weight then? Well, Timothy was being starved. He was only allowed to eat plain bread and drink small amounts of water. If he misbehaved, he would have to eat bread covered in hot sauce. On one occasion, Timothy ate the crust of a burger, and Shonda had caught this on camera. What did she do? She commanded Paul to make him throw it up. Paul did so by holding Timothy down and put his finger down his throat. July 5th, 2022. It's an average day at the Van der Ark home, and for Timothy, that sadly means another day of torment. It's around 2pm, Paul attempts to wake Timothy up, but he doesn't respond. By Paul's own account, he looks his weakest. After several attempts to wake Timothy up, Paul begins to scream and shout, but he still isn't responding. Mum, I've tried to wake Timothy up, but he isn't waking up. Put him in an ice bath, that'll do the job. And so Paul drags Timothy from the closet in the basement to the bathroom and puts him in an ice bath. Now, you may be asking yourself, how long was Timothy in this ice bath for? 10 minutes? An hour? Two? Try nine. The young boy stayed in the bath until Shonda decided to take him out at around 11 p.m. He was that weak, he couldn't even get himself out the bath. During the first hour of the ice bath, Timothy still wasn't responding, and so Shonda told Paul to make him a pizza roll to see if he would finally respond. When Paul took this pizza roll to him, he did. Of course he responded. Paul would put the pizza by Timothy's lips, and just as he was about to take a bite, Paul snatched it away. Shonda told him that no matter what, Timothy wasn't allowed to eat. Paul returned home from his night shift around two hours after Timothy was taken out the ice bath. He headed straight to bed. As the house was sound asleep, something horrific had occurred. Timothy isn't breathing. Paul was hit with this news just moments after he woke up. Surprisingly, Paul rushed to Timothy and tried to resuscitate him. However, efforts failed. He then told Shonda to call 911, but she refused to do so. After it was clear that he had passed away, Timothy was taken out of the closet, placed as if he had been sleeping in his actual room, and clothes were put on him as he had been lying in just an adult diaper for hours. Once the scene was set up, police were called. Hello, ma'am. I'm Officer Stefanich. Right now we got some people coming over to talk to you, okay? You have another son inside the house? I have two. Yeah. Are they sleeping still right now? One of them is, yeah. 
The 20 year old's awake. He's 20? No, the 20 year old's awake. Okay. He, he's, been, he's been wearing really loose clothes the last couple of weeks. He's and really did, skinny. He's really skinny, and I didn't notice till this morning because he wouldn't, like, I asked him if he's okay, and he would not answer me. Like, he's 15. He's been. He, mean, he's, he has autism? Yeah. Like a high functioning? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I had no clue how bad he was. Oh my god. Like I said, he, he did this back in uh, my husband's stroke was January 3rd. Mm -hmm. So he did this back in, I don't know, second week of January for almost three weeks. And then he finally, he ate, um, uh, he ate something last night. I can't remember what it was now, I'm sorry. It's oh. okay. Where's, yeah. your, where's your husband now? He's down at his parents' house because he can't get in our house because of this room. He can't get up the stairs. Oh. And nobody's answering the phone at their house. You can go back in the house if you want, but I can't, I gotta keep the, the basement secure. You can't go down there, okay? Oh, I get it. I just, I, I had no idea. I would have taken him in or something. Oh. Now, you said the last time you saw him was 5.30 this morning? Yeah. Did he say anything? He had fallen out of bed. At 5.30? Yeah. You sure it wasn't <laughs> earlier? I mean, it's possible. I thought it was 5.30, but I wasn't super awake. I heard a thunk, and I came down, and he's kind of laying on his side, kind of like, what the heck? And, um, and I picked, I, uh, I, I reached out, and he, he, I'm sorry. That's all right. Sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. And I reached out and he pulled himself up and I asked him if he's okay and I just asked if he hit his head. He said, no, I think I hit my, my, my knees on my chest. I think he couldn't, obviously he couldn't tell me how he fell. Um, oh my God. No, I don't know what to do. Oh my God. He said, it's okay. And then. Do you have other family here in town? Well, it was solid, but they're not answering. Yeah. My, my father-in-law's an attorney. Best thing to do is surround yourself with family. Uh, Help you get, because uh, you know, right now you're going through it by yourself, and you <laughs> you, you get overwhelmed. I have no idea. How could I have missed that? Mm. <laughs> he's been wearing baggy. I mean, he's wearing a hoodie for crying out loud, and I just didn't. <laughs> his face didn't look like that. What the heck? Mm. <sighs> Now, what's your first name, ma'am? Shonda, S-H-A-N-D-A. <sighs> and what's your, what's your last name? Is it Ferguson also? No, it's Vander Ark, V-A-N-D-E-R, space capital A-R-K. What's no, your... that's why I made, that's why I asked him to eat last night, because his face started looking a little, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. enough. And he wouldn't show, I'm like, let me see, hold your shirt up, and he wouldn't hold his shirt up. He wouldn't do anything. Did he get real skinny last time, too? Yes. The only reason I know is because my uh, my seven year old walked in on him accidentally when he was in the shower downstairs, uh -huh. and then my seven year old comes up and he's like, "Mama, Timothy's really skinny." I was like, "Oh." Was that this time or last time? That was last. That was like first week of February, is when DC discovered that. Mm -hmm. And I told him he was either gonna start eating every multiple times a day, or I was taking him to the hospital, and he didn't want to go to the hospital, so. He was, so he ended up eating on his own. Yes. Okay. And then, so this this last time, it was yeah. it because your husband's in the wasn't home? Well, he hasn't been home since January third. But okay. he had a um, he had a, a grand mal seizure. God, it's been three weeks ago now. And it was right right after that. He was he actually mentioned he was hungry the day his stepdad or his dad his stepmom called to tell us they were divorced and moving to Florida last week. Where do they live? They, they lived in Oklahoma, but they moved to outside of Jacksonville, Florida, and they're not answering their phone either. Okay. And that's his biological father? Yeah. Yeah. He moved up here with us last May because his dad couldn't handle him. And he's been great. I mean, 
last May, like as in strikes. May of last year or this yeah, year? Yeah, May of last year. Okay. May of last year. And he goes to school and everything he was? I've been homeschooling him online um, because it's high functioning. Um, it's just, he's just done better at it. I can show you his grade report online. I've got all the, it's online. Okay. Is he doing okay? Yeah, he was, I mean, he was failing math, which is not unusual, but he was passing everything else. Hmm. What's his date of birth? It was 8 6 of 2006. I should have, he just, I tried to check in the last few days and he just wouldn't let me anywhere near him. He didn't want a kiss, a hug, nothing. Probably didn't want you to give him a hug because then you could he, tell he, that I he was. I would have known. Mm. Uh, and like, he, he, I told him he was stumbling a little bit last night, but he's not the most coordinated kid in the world. And he said it was okay. And then he ate. <sighs> What was the last time he ate, you think? Last night. No. Gabriel, keep him up there. Um, he ate. He ate toast. Um, there's two. There's a seven-year-old and a 20-year-old. The seven-year-old was asleep. I guess he's not now. Oh, my God. I just made him eat. Mm. <laughs> no. I feel like such a failure. You, you see, there's food in the house. Oh my god. Where, where was, where does he sleep at? Um, right there, in that yeah, room. That, that loft bed. Okay. So notice there's another loft bed in another room. Yeah, that's room. my seven-year-old, but he's been sleeping with me since his. The, the, the youngest is my husband's and mine. Mm -hmm. And he's been sleeping with me since his daddy had a stroke. Okay. Because he's scared, and um, I offered to let Timothy move in there because, but he. Uh, he wanted to stay in his bed. Oh my god. No. I should have made a feed. I should have done something. Can they really hide that from you like that? They can hide a lot of things from oh you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What's, what's your date of birth, ma'am? Uh, 313 of 79. <laughs> what's your phone number? Um, I'm sorry. Area, area code 405. Five three seven, sixty nine hundred. <laughs> okay, you can call. You can make some calls if you want I again. Tried. I'll try. I'll try again. I'm sorry. I, just, I don't know what. No, to do. I, I, nothing I can say could help you through this. You know, it's <laughs> the best thing is to do is is <laughs> just bring your loved ones in and just. And his baby brother doesn't know what's going on, and he, I'm gonna have to tell him eventually. But I don't want to yet. Oh my gosh. But we have to investigate every every death, um, so I can't let anybody go in the basement for now. Okay. Um, a medical examiner is going to be coming here in a little bit. I'm sorry, it's a little cluttered down there, but you're fine. I'm sure y'all seen a lot worse. Okay. Um, you're probably going to get asked the same questions multiple times, so I'm so, I'm sorry for that. No, it's fine. I just like I said, I feel like. I, just miss something. So if you want to... How did he hide that from me? Um, How did he do that? Oh. I, work, I work in White Cloud. Mm -hmm. so well, that's a, I, I that's a long way. I'm, a, I'm law clerk to the circuit court judge up there. Mm. I love my job, but yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. How did this happen? Pardon? Where does he sleep? Where Down there, sleep? right there in that room. So that's the bed? Yeah. yeah. You see the pillow and the blanket and stuff? He sleeps on the top bunk? Yeah, it's a loft. There's no bottom bunk. There's okay. stuff underneath it. Oh, it's like a desk on the underneath? Yeah, well, yeah, the desk got broken, but there's boxes underneath it. <sighs> so you heard him fall. Yeah. That woke you up? Yeah. And you went down there and he was... And I helped him up. Um... I asked him if he wanted something to eat because he, he, again, it, he, he, the first time I noticed anything on even his face was last night. And he said, no, I'm not hungry. I said, did you, did you hit your head? And I checked his head to make sure he didn't have anything. I noticed he has some scratches on his face. I'm like, are you okay? No, I'm fine. And then I watched him get back up on his bed. And then I went back upstairs. And then I woke up and... I wanted to check on him this morning when I was getting ready for work.
So I went down there and and I said something and I didn't see him wake up and I shook him and he didn't respond. Was he on the bed when you came down there? Yes. And then you pulled them down and started CPR? Yes. Okay. I called 911. I, I was, my 20 year old was getting up because I was going to drop him off at work early because his e bike has a flat tire. Oh my gosh. I should have noticed this. I should have seen this. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> We got, we have, um, people coming to talk to you called Victim Services. Okay. They'll help you through Thank you. the grieving process because... Please. I, t I don't... I, he's, he's really good at hiding stuff. Mm. He's, that's part of the reason his dad couldn't handle him is because he kept lying about stuff. Mm. How old is he? Fifteen. Fifteen? He'll be sixteen in August. Okay. But his dad texted me last May and said, I can't handle him anymore. I have to send him to live with you. And I'm like, yeah, sure, absolutely. Why, why was that? Why was, what, did he, what did he do that? He, said he was lying to him. He was um, destroying things. Um, is, he, is he hard to deal with? I don't think so, but I'm stricter than his dad. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that, I mean, he, he, he's, the lying's been a problem. Um, but nothing well, major. Yeah, nothing crazy. No. Um, he's, All teenagers he's, lie tripped down the stairs a couple of times like just half the flight and then later he came back to me admitted he did it intentionally but i've asked him I'm like you're trying to hurt yourself he's like no i just wanted to see what would happen it's, that's the way he, a lot of times he, he wants to see what would happen if he does stuff and oh my gosh and i guess he he was take he, he's prescribed adhd medicine but he's yeah. not taking it yeah because it was he wasn't able to sleep with it and he was doing really well, and he asked me if he could not take it, and I said, okay. And it was killing his appetite. That doesn't help. That was, he started, he quit taking it about the time of the first hunger strike, because um, when he finally started eating, and he was, he was. But he did eat last night, you said? Yes. He had some toast with butter on it. It's what he had. That's all he wanted to eat. He said his stomach was a little upset, and he didn't want to eat anything else. Check on the other kids. Yeah, you can do that for sure. I know my 20 year old's got my seven year old, but still. Nope, it's. Hey. Paul, oh, you okay up here? Yeah. I'm, just, I'm sorry, Splutter Joe. I'm really sorry. Oh my god. I knew I should have made him eat, but he just went. Did you notice it was covering up with big clothing? You didn't notice, never mind. Mm -hmm. I love it here, but you just, you never noticed it. Do you have a picture of him like, before he started losing weight? Um, yeah. Let's see if I can find it. doing all right yeah it's almost like you're in a daze like you don't know what's real and what's not hey, have, you, have you been talking to him at all recently I talked to him yesterday morning to get him up that was did you know that he was in this hunger strike I think I, huh, yeah, I, I, I mean, did I tell you or not? I don't know if I did or not. No, I, don't, I don't think you did. Because he's, he's skin and bone. I know, and I just, how did he He's, he's really. Well, he, he, he doesn't communicate with him hardly at all. Like, they say hi, and they don't, yeah, he's. Are you guys full brothers or half brothers? Well, they're full. The only half is the one that's in there. Okay. Uh, I might as well get your name while I'm here. You're probably going to be asked this a thousand times, but uh, what's your first name, son? Paul. P-A-U-L. 
What's your middle name? Byron, E-Y-R-O-N. And last name? Ferguson, F-E-R-G-U-S-O-N. Nobody's answering the phone now. What's your date of birth? 04, or 10 to April 2002. You have your own phone number? Um, I recently got a new phone, so I want to look at my new number. Hold on, I'll find it for you. Plus one two three one six 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 four six three eight. And when when was the last time you talked to Tim? Uh, yesterday morning when I was getting him up. No, yesterday afternoon before you left work. Before I picked you up and took you to work because your e bike tire uh, flat. You were you yeah. talked to him then. Uh, Got off of work at one all right. this morning. Has, has he talked to you recently about his problems at all or what's, what he's dealing with? No, he, he never said any of this word to me. Mm. He all. Did you guys have normal conversations? Um, I think the last time we did was before all of this happened. After that, they, he just they, they literally, because he works a lot and they. Mm -hmm. they And sometimes brothers will tell each other what they're not willing to tell their parents. He didn't even know anything about it, he said, so. Timothy died as the result of malnourishment and hypothermia. He weighed just 69 pounds at the time of his death. According to the autopsy report, his bones were protruding from his skin. There were severe contusions from those areas. A prominent contusion was on his left ankle, while multiple contusions were located on his legs, arms, face, torso, and backside. When police arrived at the property on the morning of July 6th, 2022, the elephant in the room was Timothy's weight. Shonda's answer as to why he was so skinny was that he went on a hunger strike. That was a lie. Police at that moment in time had no reason not to believe her though. After all, they had no evidence to suggest otherwise. However, once they had collected certain pieces of evidence, including some of the cameras, it painted a different picture and showed Shonda's true colours. One of the cameras that was seized by police was placed just outside of the closet in the basement. Listen to how a lieutenant assigned to the case describes what he saw on the camera. And let's talk about that first video first. Um, it sounded funny when I said it. Talk about the first video. Uh, that, that it's a video that um, actually shows Timothy Ferguson being brought into the small room, but being brought brought into that closet uh, just hours before he passes away. Are you familiar with that video? I am. And have you seen that video? I have. And uh, I, we've made an agreement because of the sensitive nature of the video and, and it's frankly graphic nature that that's not going to be played for the jury is that your understanding that's correct um, I do want to unfortunately have to ask you some questions about it um, so if, if you could just recall that video um, and first of all explain to the jury where what camera that video was obtained from so we spoke earlier that we had seen several video cameras from the home this specific camera was called a la view camera and it was found originally during our First, the, the execution of the first search warrant right outside the door of the small room. Um, further into the investigation, it was discovered that there was a micro SD card within this camera that contained video files. And uh, that that camera the, and the video that we're talking about, what does that cap? What what does it capture? At least in terms of an overview of where it's pointed. So at the time those video files were generated by the camera, it was positioned within the small room. Um, in one of the corners looking at Timothy when he was in there. And you've had an opportunity again to review those, is that correct? That's correct. And uh, at approximately 11 o'clock, uh, 2303 in military time, 11 o'clock or so, um, do you observe Ms. Vander Ark on that video? I do. And what does she do? Uh, on the video around that time that you mentioned, Ms. Vander Ark is observed placing a, a tarp into the closet and kind of spreading it out as a makeshift bed. And after she does that, what happens after that? After she lays the tarp on the floor, she is seen dragging Timothy by the arms uh, onto the tarp and into the room. And are you able to see Timothy, Timothy's body at that point in time? I am. And uh, what condition would you describe? What, how would you describe his physical condition at that point? 
his eyes were open, but not really seeing anything. Um, he was he appeared to be unresponsive. He didn't make any. He didn't speak at all. He he moaned a few times. Um, it's very concerning watching that and appear and seeing his appearance. And uh, you've also obviously had an opportunity to see both the photographs of Timothy at the scene as well, after he was deceased and the autopsy photos. Did he appear substantially the same way that he appeared in those photographs as well? He did. Very, very thin uh, bones protruding. Um, in particular, he wasn't wearing any pants, so I could see his, his hip bones and his knee joint very prominently displayed as she positioned him in front of the camera. And did it appear that he was wearing a diaper? He was. He was wearing an adult diaper. And uh, you said that Ms. Van Der positioned him in front of the camera so that, so that his, what was facing the camera, I guess? His face was facing the camera. It was the primary focus of the camera is to keep a, a view of his face. And does, that camera also records audio, does it not? It does. And did it record any audio from Ms. Van Der as she was pulling mm -hmm. Timothy into the closet and positioning him on the floor? It did. Um, it, I could hear Ms. Van Der Ark tell Timothy that he is pathetic. Um, and then adds, uh, but I already knew that as she was dragging him in. Um, she also makes co a comment to him that you owe me the biggest apology in the world and uh, suggests that he wouldn't be able to leave the restroom unless she, or leave the room for restroom breaks unless he, she receives an apology from him. And then does she leave the room at that point? She does. Uh, does she come back a little while later? I believe it was approximately 15 minutes later she comes back into the, the room. And uh, during that time period, though, are you able to observe Timothy on that video? I do. And does Timothy do something between the time that she leaves the first time and the time she comes back? Initially, she had positioned him on his side with his face facing the camera. And over the period of about 15 minutes, he rolled onto his back um, so his face was no longer visible. When she comes back in the second time, what does she do? She repositions him so his face is visible to the camera. Um, she has one of her Great Danes come into the room and instructs the Great Dane to lick his face, trying to get what appeared to me trying to get a reaction out of him, and even makes a comment to the dog saying that, see, he reacted to you. And um, so there's a Great Dane. Does does the Great Dane stay in the room at that point or not? It kind of wants, steps over him, you know, licks his face, investigates, and then eventually leaves the room after she provided the dog instructions to lick his face. And what does she do at that point? During this time, and previously while I observed Timothy in the room, uh, he was taking short, shallow breaths through his mouth. Um, kind of picture how a fish out of water would breathe with gasping for breath through their mouth. And she clamps his mouth shut, uh, tells him that he doesn't need to breathe like that, and then holds his mouth shut for a period of time until he's forced to take breaths through his nose and tells him, see, you didn't need to breathe through your mouth like that. You're being a dummy or an idiot, something along those lines. And does she leave the room at that point? She does. And is that the last time anyone actually has any contact with Timothy in that room? That's correct. And uh, you've had an opportunity, that, does that camera continue to record all through the night into the next morning? It does. Because this was about 11, between 11 and 11.30 at, on July 5th, is that correct? That's correct. And into, so the camera records into the next morning, is that correct? That is correct. And um, you've had an opportunity to watch all of that video, is that, is that my understanding? Yes. And at some point, does it appear that... You're not a medical doctor, I understand that, but does it appear that Timothy actually passes away while in view of that camera? Yes, uh, it appears that way to me. He can be seen, his chest rising, lowering very slightly, uh, small little movements, and then there is a point in time where you stop seeing that, and his body just kind of relaxes, and it appears to me that he has, he has died at that point. And does he, does, from that point on, is there any movement of his body on, on, until the next morning, is there any movement of his body at all to indicate that he's moving or alive? There is not. There is no more movement from his body from that point. Yeah. Although Shonda van der Ark disposed of some evidence, including the alarm on the closet door, vibration sensors, and cameras that were located upstairs, what police had in their possession was more than enough to make a case against at least Shonda. So she was arrested and brought in for questioning. I'll tell you everything that's going on. 
or what I've been instructed to. All right, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right, um, you're going to be charged with uh, child abuse right now. Um, I believe it's the first or second degree. So it, it is a felony. So you you won't be able to get out of jail until you see the judge until the warrant paperwork's down there, okay? Which will probably be tomorrow. All right. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm, I'm the bearer of bad news right now. You know? Yeah, it's been a bad couple of days. Six months. Mm. Six months. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, you're all right. Um, I do have to handcuff you, but I'll do it in the front. Okay. Um, if my blood sugar crashes, I need that. Are you, are you diabetic? I'm reactive hypoglycemic. Okay. You take medication for that? No. I have a sort of stub normally, but I didn't bring him. Yeah. For good reason. All right. I can let you have that all the way up until the jail. But the jail won't let you bring in any kind of food or nothing. So if you want to drink it, you can always drink it now. Just worry about we'll keep it to my stomach. All right. I haven't been able to keep anything down. Oh. The last couple of days. Oh, I don't want you puking then if you're going to try to drink it. I can try. We'll see. I don't know. All right. So I got my handcuff sign. I'm going to do it in the front because I don't. you're not going to give me any problems. But we're going to have to go down there. Strange. Pardon? I don't have the strength to do anything right now. I wouldn't anyway. Did y'all lose an officer? But I have to cover you again. Did y'all lose somebody? Yes, a Detroit so officer was sorry. killed yesterday. I'm so sorry. Yep. Um, come this way. I need you. I want to see if there's a girl here to check your, okay. your pockets. All right, let's go over and sit down. Relax for a second. Because you're, I'm, like I said, I'm the bearer of bad news, I know. Just have a seat for a second. Relax. <laughs> Bag here, including all your jewelry. All I've got is that. Pardon? All I've got is those. Okay. Okay, I'm lightheaded. I'm sorry. That's right. Oh. Uh, Take these off. Can you just sit? Huh? Can you just sit while you sit? I'm trying not to. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You have a shirt on underneath there? Yeah. You have to take your um, sweatshirt off, but you get to keep it. It just makes it easier to search you. Okay. But I get to keep it? Yes. Okay. You probably won't be able to keep the headband, though. That's fine. That's fine. They usually make... What about the scrunchie? Probably not. Anything that you might be able to hurt yourself with, they, they take automatically. You don't hurt yourself with the scrunchie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Belts and stuff like that, shoelaces. Oh. All right. Oh, uh, what kind of shoes you got? Basics. All right. You're, I'll have to take them in a little bit here, but I like to have them keep it on you as long as possible. So it's because the floor is closed, cold. It's cold in here. Yep. That's why it's actually good. It's good that you got the sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like she's already coming. Uh, so go ahead and slip your shoes off there. Socks too, or just shoes? Just shoes. You get to keep your socks. Thank God. Yep. Hey, hey, hey. Howdy, howdy. What's going on? Long so, time, long time no see you. I know, right? I try not to come here. I know, right? I need you to take a headband off for me, too, as well. She has a scrunchie, also. Yep, they gotta come out as well. Sorry. She was, wrong with you? She's feeling a little lightheaded. My stomach's really upset. Oh, is it? Well, okay. All right. Vendor, do you have any other last names? 
What's your maiden name? Ramsey. You do drugs? No, no. I haven't been able to keep anything down since yesterday. Um, She's had a, a rough two days. Okay. Her uh, four, her 15 year old son died yesterday. Mm -hmm. And she's charged with child abuse. Mm. Okay. So she's she has a lot of medical problems, but she really doesn't take any medication. But she does need um. Any mental health issues at all? Yeah. Uh, ADHD. ADHD. OCD. Oh, OCD just means she's putting one spot over and over again. Is it? Sometimes. That's actually one form. It's not the form. I, I know what OCD is. Um, she does have. She says allergy induced um, asthma. So she can't wear masks. I had a doctor's note. I didn't. I didn't bring it with me. I didn't know. I hate to tell you this. This is not school. Doctor knows do not work. We have our own doctors, and um, they will deal with you on that. And then she does have asthma, so she she might need a buterol as an emergency. You know. <laughs> do you have a prescription for albuterol? Ventolin. Yeah. You can place your hands up there. There's gonna be harm. Let's spread your legs. Oh, yeah, just like the um, the hands. There you go. Yeah, there, there's pictures on the wall for you, my dear. Uh, oh, I'm not. That's all right. You're not. You've never done this before, so. You got a bra? No, I just wear pants. It's more comfortable. I don't have much. Ready to sit up? When I get done. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you put your leg down. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ready to sit up? You take your hands down. You can look open your mouth and see your tongue. I took her temperature. It's 96. I saw that. Oh, sweet. I didn't know if we started doing that or not. What? Temperature. Yep. You can grab your shoes. I kind of made a, made a mess of the booking sheet, but I fixed it. I just put stuff in the wrong spot. First, second, third, fourth. They just said the felony, which would be first, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I asked specifically, I said, what charge? And they said child abuse. I'm like, oh, there's like a whole bunch of them. So. Mm. All right. Go ahead, follow her. You can grab some shoes. Paul Ferguson, on the other hand, was called in for a voluntary interview with police. This is a recording noise, just so that you're aware. I know there's some cameras in here, but the sound is kind of messed up. Gotcha. So, uh, I'll turn that on to you just in case it helps. Yeah. <coughs> you came down here with uh, Officer Stephanie, is that something? Yes. How did that kind of all transpire? I don't know how I ended up here. I was, from my, I know that my mother had come, I think, down here. Okay. Or something. I think it was in the court, or I don't exactly know the full details. Okay. But, um, she left my stepfather's phone with me. I don't have any access to anything. The only thing that I would be able to do was if the person she's with, I think his name is Stephen? Stanley, Frank Stanley. Stanley. Yes, thank you. Uh, if he could, he would contact. I would be able to pick that up, but okay, nothing else. Were you supposed to work today, or no? <coughs> so you didn't have work today. No, I've got a couple of days off. Okay, when you go back Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a morning shift. 
Are you working two different jobs? Did you say you're working two different jobs? No, I, I used to work two different oh, jobs. Okay. I heard you say I lived that. in Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Because so, I think your brother was like, I want to work two jobs. And you're like, mm mm. No, you don't. No. <laughs> Four hours of sleep maximum was a nightmare. That's a joke. That's not even funny, actually. Huh. Um. Yeah, four hours doesn't sound like a lot to, to get anything done. What kind of jobs are you doing? Fast food. Okay. And I had one before, and then after I graduated from an alternative school right. early, um, I started a second one that was yeah. by my biological father's demands, basically. Okay. Um. Have you talked to him at all recently, biological father? Does he know um, what's going on? Or? I don't think quite yet. The last time we talked to him was last week. Okay. He uh, he and my stepmother are got a divorce, um, so they called and let us know about all that. What uh? What is your relationship like with him? I mean, do you try to do you associate with him at all, or not? Really? Not really. I found out that a lot of what he's told me about my biological mother up here was nothing more than blatant lies. Okay. He said that she didn't care for me, that yeah. she never wanted to see me, which were both lies. It was just, he's a control freak. Okay. So, and he's very manipulative. Okay. My stepmother's names were never even on any anything for like paying bills or for school stuff it was all him okay yeah. so he's very much in yes. control of everything yes so and uh i know that that night timothy did eat because we had pizza he had three slices oh, of cheese. Wait, i want to stop it for just a second yes yeah, sorry that's okay yes. um i don't want to talk anything specific about the case just yet uh, since you since the police showed up at your house and yeah they brought you down here I want to yeah. provide you some rights before we talk about that sort of thing. What yeah. I do want you to know, though, is that we went through the phones, okay? Okay. And we're beginning to go through the phones, and there's a lot of evidence in the phones, and I know that you're kind of aware of communication between yourself and your mother. Yes. And those sort of things. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about. Yeah. But, um, I mean, certainly those are very serious things that you guys are talking about. Yeah. And, it, I mean, from what I saw, it sounds like you're compassionate in that, you yes. cared about him, and you sent some pictures that were like, he's looking too skinny, and we, we need to feed him, and you know, and so sometimes you get frustrated, but at the end of yeah. the day, you kept coming back to like, to caring. Um, yeah. But the end result of that, he passed away, right? And he passed away from not eating food. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I want you to be aware of this stuff, okay? So these are your random rights, right? So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to talk on the attorney and the right to his presence before or during any questioning. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, one will be appointed to a public expense to represent you before any questioning. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, when we talk about, I just jump right into it. Yeah. I know that we talked yesterday. And yeah. I know that not everything that we talked about was the truth yesterday. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. You don't have to feel bad. You don't have to feel guilty about not telling the truth to me. Okay. I want you to just focus on yourself right now and think about what's best for you yeah. and, and let, try to get to the truth of what really happened with your brother because he deserves yeah. that. Um, yeah. I mean, there's clearly a lot of messages about stuff that you guys are doing with him, about what he's eating, about restricting his food. How did that, how did that all work? Like, what was he allowed to eat? We stopped the food restrictions recently because we had noticed this then. We wanted to get that back on. We didn't want any of this. We never wanted him to be injured or hurt. Okay. I loved him so much. Yeah, I can tell that. I can yes. certainly tell that. When you say we, you're talking about your mother. And yes, she mother. Uh, she loved him. We wanted what's best. Yeah. The thing is, he was stuck in the past. Okay. What, uh, so you stopped the food restriction. When did that kind of happen? Like ballpark that for me? Two weeks Approximately, we, we were hoping that we could get enough where it would be safe and then we could continue to add it back to where okay. we wouldn't have to worry and we could... What were the what were the restrictions? We made sure that it was still something that gave him enough calories and everything. We, it was rice or bread and, like I said last week, he got pizza. Okay. 
What were the what were they in place for, like in the first place? Sneaking food over and over and over. Okay. We we've tried everything. We were nice. We tried different consequences, but you just okay. couldn't never listen. What were some of the other types of consequences? Like um, like prior to prior to like are we talking like we did take away his devices okay. because that was also because he wouldn't stay on his school sites and would just go and try and play games or watch YouTube. Okay. But he was, the thing is, he should have been held back so much. Yeah. But he passed all of his final exams. So I don't think it was my stepmother. My stepmother was amazing. Yeah. But I believe it was my father's doing it. Okay. Helping with past exams. Was it all online school? No, for back in Oklahoma, he went to public. The thing is, he never really did any of the other work, but when it came to final exams, he had everything he needed to know. So they let him move to the next grade, which was just... Right. So, you guys lived together back in Oklahoma? Yeah. What was life like back there? Hectic. Okay. My, uh, my step, my step-nieces, my stepmother's grandchildren lived with us. Okay. Because of stuff that was going on between their mother and their father. My stepmother had custody. Yeah. And we had, uh, at that point, we were living in a four bedroom with eight people in the house. Jeez. Yeah. And. Did you share room with him then? Yes. Okay. And it absolutely smelled. Because even then, you. Even when he, the bathroom was literally just a couple feet away, he wouldn't get up and go. Okay. And what is that? You kind of told me about it yesterday, but you said there was some sort of problem that he had to cause that, or? Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I don't know. Honestly, no. I just, I, that's what I've assumed. Okay. Because it's, I'm pretty sure it's been basically his whole life that this has been happening. And it's not just that. He's urinated in places back in Oklahoma, in his closet, in dressers, yeah. everything. Okay. He's, uh, what type of, like, disorders does he have that you're aware of? I know he has ADHD. I believe he has sensory processing. Okay. Um, I was never there for any sort of autism spectrum test, but from what I've seen, I know that he, that probably was a thing. I also know he was motor and speech impaired. He okay. couldn't run right and talk right. I think when he was younger, he had to have a surgery on his ears to have tubes put in because he has heightened hearing that was very loud noises could be painful. Oh, okay. So too much. Yeah. The fact is that he could hear my mother, my stepmother talking with a friend about going to a movie with the TV when it was on really high volume. Oh, okay. Because one of those sort of pointers. What about you? Do you have any of those sort of things or anything? Uh... I have ADHD. Okay. And I think they said I was diagnosed with sensory processing, but from what my mother has told me, that that's, that's just no. What is that? I, I'm not sure. Uh, What's sensory processing? It's basically when you overreact to things way oh. too much. Yeah. And I guess loud noises and things are okay. and bright lights are disturbing. For me, that's, there's not really any of that. The only problems I have is when someone's music has a lot of bass drumming in it. Okay. For me, that'll feel like someone's smashing my ribs with a mallet. Oh, okay. That's why I don't hardly listen to music very high if it's got uh, bass drums, because it hurts. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, did you go to school? Yes, I went to the school back in Oklahoma. I graduated from Santa Fe High School. Okay. I just, I've even got the diploma and I stand in my room. Okay. You graduated from high school. What did you kind of do after that? You just... Um, I think... I know that my father had kicked me out after, like, in, I think, May two years ago or so. So, like, 20, May of 20? Is that 20? 20? Yeah. And due to COVID, the graduation had been postponed to July. And I had been managed. I had managed to get my bio mom's number at that point, and was capable of talking to her and telling her how all of this had happened. Yeah. And I also asked some of the things that about what Dad had told me. The whole did he? Did you really not care? 
Right. And from what he told, and I'm pretty sure it's scientifically impossible that she had her tubes undone for for Gabriel, which, from what I'm guessing, that's an impossibility, isn't it? Oh, okay. So I, he's, he's, I don't a know miracle, that he's a little miracle child. Fair enough. He's a blessing to this world. Yeah. Is your mom feel like that? Certainly. That he's a blessing. Of course. Yeah. She loves him so much. Yeah. She loved every single one of us, but my dad's controlish, freaky nature was just... He didn't want her having any contact and screwing all of his control up. Okay. And there was a thing back in Oklahoma where I had to... I had problems with emotional release. I, I was so terrified of him that I didn't ever want to release any of the negative emotions I ever had around him. It was... There were times where I wanted to say no, but I was so terrified that I just couldn't. Yeah. Here, I can release my anger, and I do it in the right ways. I never do it any in any way that I'm not supposed to. Okay. And if I unintentionally cop an attitude with my mother, I, I realize it, and I apologize, telling her that I did not mean to, that I just slipped a small amount, and I'm going to go and do something to calm down. Would there be any sort of consequence for your mom if you slipped up with her attitude-wise, or how would that work? Um, there were times when I would cop an attitude that was unnecessary, and she would have me get off devices for maybe 15 minutes, because usually that was what it was revolved around, because I, I'll be honest, I have, a, I have an addiction to my devices. Okay. I, it's... It's not something I can really do without, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I, I never had not very much of that back in Oklahoma. Yeah. My dad was strict. He didn't even give me a phone. My si my sister and my stepsister had phones before I did. And that was due to the fact that he could not raise a male. Right. And at first he thought not that the ADHD was just ADD. Because, like my mother, I could hyper-focus, which is actually a symptom of ADHD. Right. And then, so now you're in work, and then we yep. talked yesterday about how you're paying bills. And yep, and unlike, and yeah, and, and unlike my step, my father, she doesn't take, force me to give her half of my paycheck. He forced that on me. Yeah. And I was working basically minimum wage so, at both. Yeah, that's tough. It was nightmarish. And the thing is that my stepmother didn't even know about that until after I had moved and I had told her. Okay. And she apologized so heavily because she she was just going to want some stuff to help with rent at times. Yeah. And when he asked to borrow money, he never paid it back. And my mother has paid it back every time. Whether it's in a way like paying for the bike payments for my electric electronic bike, because, you know, we put a down payment and then we have to do the consecutive payments for yeah, it. Was that your first, would you consider that like your first big purchase on your own? Your electric bike, or have you purchased um, a more expensive thing? More expensive than that? I don't believe so. Okay. No. What about PCs? How much do you spend a decent amount of money on computers, or do you um, to just piece them together, or? We spent good amounts, because... Minecraft is something I, I've always loved, Yeah. and because for me, for the ADHD, being able to build and be creative is just something that I absolutely adored. Okay. And I also, it also was something that I liked doing for YouTube. I have a YouTube channel myself. It's not popular or anything, but okay. it is very... It's something that I was inspired by from the Preston plays in the recently past Technoblade. Yeah. Okay. So, you come here with Mom about two years ago. Yeah. And Timothy comes about a year ago. You said, I think you said yesterday, the same date even, right? Yeah, the same right date that I, was, I left the house. I, I, I was, I moved here into Michigan, I think, on the 30th. Okay. Because for the time after I had moved out of my parents' house, I stayed with my Uncle David and Linda. Okay. Who both had actually been tricked by my father to also believe that my mother was bad. Until she managed to clear the air. Yeah. 
So you say the same date, but a year later, does that sound right? Yeah, I moved okay. here at a later date, but I moved, we, he was he moved up here on the day I was kicked out, basically kicked oh, out. Okay. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. My dad had basically put a timeline, like I had to move out by a certain date and have my own house and be on my own two feet, which the thing is, he never prepared me for any of this. He just, yeah. in any of that, he just, right. like I said, he was, I love him. But most of the respect I had for him is gone. Just so Timothy comes up here. What's life like immediately when he gets up here? It was it's good at first. The thing is, it this has happened before. Not like moving up from somewhere, but for the whole thing where I think he said back in Oklahoma, I think once or twice he had said something about being suicidal. Okay. And we had put him in, in my mother, my stepmother and father agreed on this, that he should have, he could be institutionalized. Okay. And when he got back, the first couple of weeks were good. He didn't misbehave, but then after that, it just reverted back to what he was doing before. Okay. The destructiveness and everything. What, uh, let's explain that, like, to the truth. He, it was very dangerous. He would pull the outlet covers off, he would screw into light fixtures, it was, okay. our house in Edmond was his room, it was, he'd pull the studs out of the wall, rip off the painting, the paint, I mean, okay. it was, yeah. Were you able to have a conversation with him, like you and I are having like a back and forth conversation, or he wasn't able to talk like that? Uh, he could talk. But the thing is that it would mostly be hard to understand. Okay. Because of the speech imperation, I think it's called. Cool. I don't know what that word uh, is. Speech impediment? Yeah, there we go. Okay. But, uh, he was in therapy for that and the motor. When he, up here? In no, in Oklahoma. Do you know if he be in any therapy or anything up here? Um, no. Okay. Do you know if he ever went to the doctor at all? Here? Um... No, honestly, we never, until, I don't know, we, we managed, since we had stopped the last hunger strike and managed to get him back to a safe weight, we were, we were hoping and praying that he wouldn't need any sort of assistance at that point, which he didn't, he was, he was fine, but then this whole ordeal happened and right. I honestly feel like we should have taken him to the doctor sooner, we, sh we could have done something, but we, he, with all this, that this happened, it's just... Yeah. Well, I mean, how long ago do you think you probably should have taken him to the doctor? Honestly, if I'm going to be honest, I'd say the day after the divorce. The final we got the message about the divorce. And the thing is that my mother can't even face my father right now. We, she doesn't want to call him because the one thing that she and I both know is that he's going to hurl every ounce of blame that he can at her. So what? Uh, the, the, when was the, the when was that divorce? Like July. You know, I what? think it was exactly a week ago today or tomorrow. Something like that. So a week. Oh, about a week ago. He's yes. got a. Yeah, we uh, we. They, I saw uh, I saw on your phone that you had sent a, a couple pictures to your mom. Of yes. Him, pretty skinny, and you said you know hey he's nothing but skin. Like, yeah, you know, I was I was very concerned. It just. Yeah. Yeah, what, do you think that maybe would have been a good time to take him to the doctor, or? Yeah, honestly, that probably would have been one, too. I just, yeah. I don't know. And then you sent a picture of, like, his legs that was just basically gone, right? And said, yeah. No was, wonder he can't stand, or something along the lines yeah, of Yeah, but the thing is, before yesterday, and I think the day before, he could walk. Yeah. He might need a little support every so often, like he put his hand against the wall or grab the rail of the stairs. But after a couple of seconds, he'd let go and be fine. Okay. It was never anything major. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When was like the last time he was really like talking to you, like able to have a conversation or at least try to have a conversation? Um, last time he actually talked was three days ago, but the day before or the day after that, the day before yesterday, he could talk. A, he talked a small amount in the morning, but then he just sort of was making groans and moans, and 
it concerned me. I was, as my mother was driving me to work, I, I recommended that maybe we should take him to the hospital. Okay. I'm not sure if that ever happened or not. I, what did I she What did she say about that when you, when you made that recommendation? I, I don't know. I think after that, I think that was like as I was getting out of the car and shutting the door. Yeah. So we're talking, so today's the 7th, yesterday, 6th. What day are we talking about the last time he was really kind of talking outside of the morning? Growing? The 5th. The fifth. He, he talked some in the morning. He was okay. responsive. Yeah. That much I know. What's the deal with the photograph in the bathtub of his face? Like, zoomed in on his face. Uh, he, he, he had been taking a bath. Okay. And I went in there to check on him at one point, and he's just kind of laying there. I'm like, bud, you okay? He didn't respond, but he was looking around, so, and he was breathing, I know that much. Yeah. So. Okay. So, at that time, but he wasn't talking at that time? No, and it, it did, it's, it started to concern me. I te I'm not sure if I texted Mama about it or not. Well, you sent a picture to her. Yeah, I probably should have said something about the ER at that point, though. Well, I certainly... Was so stupid. You have to think about it like this, right? She's, she's a grown adult. And if she, she sees that, that's not all on you, right? You you made, from what I see, you made numerous attempts to say, we need to do something different about this. Yeah. We, need to, we can't keep doing this thing. I know she's a good person. Yeah. I just, and it's not I a don't, problem. I don't think, I don't know if this is both of our faults. If we should have done something sooner. I know we both could have. Yeah. I mean, I think you have to think about this. Right now, it's not a time about blaming people, but it's a time to try to figure out you know, when, when could we have changed things? What could we have done differently? How did we get to the point where we were at? Because, you know, clearly where you guys got to, you say you were in the bath. That wasn't a nice, enjoyable bath, though, right? That was a punishment bath, right? That's a cold, ice cold bath. Yeah. And, and that doesn't, that's hard to understand. I did wash, that's I, he did, he, I did tell him that if he wanted to wash up, and he did, but then in the middle of it, I think he, he the whole, it's laying there in a daze happened. When he's getting these ice baths, I know there's numerous of them, right? I mean, because I've read through the messages. Yes. How, how are you getting the ice? Like, where's it coming from? Well, we have an ice machine upstairs. It's not a lot. It okay. can barely create any. It's enough to make it a full-on. But, okay. but it's a cold bath. Yeah. <laughs> and you're putting ice in there? Like, one, one dump of ice, two dumps? One dump. dump. Yeah, okay. just maybe that much. And, and then you're just running cold water, or what type of water? Uh, it, the water doesn't exactly go cold, cold. Okay. It says there's a cold button, but right. it's basically sort of lukewarm-ish. How many times would you ask me that you guys give cold baths as a punishment for um, not behaving or whatever, whatever, for whatever reason? I think for punishments, it was... I don't exactly know the number, but it wasn't a lot. So are we talking like 5, 10, 20, every day, every other day? Like mm -hmm. any idea? At all? 5. Yeah. But whose idea was it to give him a cold bath as a punishment? It was my mother's. Yeah. I I wasn't sure if it would do if it would be a punishment effective or not. I don't Do you remember the first time you guys did it? Like what why? Like what no, did you do? Not exactly. What did you do on that day that you sent the photo that made you have to give him a cold bath? Um, I think it was that he not only peed, but also pooped in bed, yeah. and my mother wasn't too happy because it absolutely reeked. Yeah. And when we talk about bed, I understand we've been to the house and we've been through all the messages. Yeah. They, where did you sleep most of the nights in that closet? Yes. When did that kind of start happening? Um, or had he always been staying there? No, he hadn't always. Okay. But the thing was, the loft bed, if you've noticed, yeah. the screws and stuff, that was his doing. Okay. And we couldn't get it safely back. Yeah. So, he didn't sleep in the closet? Yes. We made sure that it was cleaned. He had a mattress in there, but then he decided to rip off the... Uh, cover, like a sort of plastic cover we'd put on there to keep it from getting smelly and yeah. disgusting. We wanted, we always wanted what's best for him. We, it's, I don't know. So
So you guys decide to move them into the closet. There's an alarm on the door. Is that so? What's that for? When you would try and sneak, because if you notice, there was also one on the garage door. That was also because, yeah, there's some food in there that he would try and sneak. Right. And it wasn't just that he was hungry for, for, at some point for those. It was yeah. that it, he wanted something sweet. He was, right. And, yeah, at times he would be taking stuff that was going to have plans for food, actual food. Right. Yeah, I agree. I see exactly what you're saying. And it... I don't know about the whole, I don't know, just bread at some points, but we did start giving him actual better food. When when you talk about the bedroom being moved into that closet, is that your idea or is that your mom's idea? That was my mother's. Okay. Yes. And uh, so how long do you think he was staying in that closet for? Um, a uh, couple of weeks maybe. Okay. I think it's, I think... We truly had act, started activating the alarm on the door every night after he, we had found that he would sneak out and get back up on. Yeah. Which was loft bed. Where, like I said, that thing was dangerous at that point because he had been screwing around with the bolts and screws yeah. and at any point it could have given way and he could have gotten seriously injured. Right, yeah. So he, he moves into there. There's the tarp in there, is that just to prevent? What is that for? That was after we, I think we had gone to like three plastic covers that he had shredded. Yeah. Before we decided to put down the tarp. And honestly, I had expected him to complain, but he didn't, and I don't know. I just... <coughs> so there's this restriction on food, he talked about bread. For how long was he just eating just bread? A week or two. What was he kind of eating before that? Um, we do ramen sandwiches. And I think at some points we actually give him like a meal. Yeah. What, uh, why was it that he couldn't have meals? The whole sneaking, I just, I don't know. Because he was sneaking food? A lot, yeah, we, over and over and over. Who's there would literally be times where I would be sitting on the couch playing. Yeah. And then I'd look up and he's there grabbing something. Yeah. And so, whose idea was it for him to just eat bread? Is that your idea? No. Whose idea was that? Tell me about the hot sauce. I know that that was used as both the punishment and it was put on the bread. Was it always on the bread? Not always, no. Okay. But the thing is, it still hardly did anything for him. Yeah. There would be times where it would do something for me because I'd accidentally rub my eye after I put it on there. Yeah. It was, ow. Yeah. So you're putting, are you, what, what dictates whether or not there's hot sauce on the bread that he's eating? What, what decides that? Whenever my mother told me to put hot sauce on it, I did. Okay. It was normally a thin layer to make sure that it wouldn't be too much. Because from what I know, goat, the ghost or the California Reaper is what, 2,000 scoville or 2 million scoville? What does that mean? It's the hot sauce or the, hot, the heat index, basically. Oh, okay. And that's pretty high? Very. So, how long have you guys been using the hot sauce for? Um, almost a month, maybe. Okay. And was that only on bread, or was that on other stuff, too? Uh, I think one time we put it in some rice. Okay. But after that, I don't think we did that again. So, what was it, what was it used for, right? Because you're giving him bread as a meal. What's the purpose of the hot sauce? I know it was punishment, but honestly, I don't think it was that useful because, like I said, he had no feeling in his tongue. He he totally bit a hole in it at one point and didn't even feel it. Was he eating this bread with hot sauce, or was he? Yeah, he was. 
Is that really the only things he had to eat those days, or would he get other things to eat? Um, from the bread and rice, others are not, not that I know of. Okay. So for how long do you think he just ate rice and bread and hot sauce? Maybe the four months, maybe. Or four, one, one month, sorry. Oh, I was month. thinking four weeks and I okay. didn't scramble that. Okay. We totally understand. I understand what you're saying. So yeah. maybe about four weeks. Yeah. But Did you see a decline in him during that four weeks of losing even more weight or being even less responsive or did, what what changed when you moved into doing that? Um I think it was that there would be times where it would take him a moment to respond. At first I thought it was just him acting, but then I was getting concerned, I think, a week or so, maybe, ago. That his, his responses are delayed, is that what you're Yeah, saying? and... As a matter of fact, I think you mentioned that to your mom multiple times, right? That, that he doesn't seem to be responding, that he yeah. can't walk very well, that he's stumbling. I think you mentioned those things to your yeah. mom. Yeah. What, she, what was her response to those things? Um, I think she was thinking because there was one point where he did that, but it was before he was thin. Yeah. And it scared the crap out of me, but then he admitted to my mother later that day while I was at work that it was an act. Okay. So I guess we made the mistake, that she made the mistake of believing that that was what it was. I don't, I know that he's done stuff like that back in Oklahoma too. He would, he would do something that would scare the crap out of us yeah. to make us believe that something was wrong. And several times here, he faked seizures. I've seen it because, and I've also seen what happens because back from Oklahoma, he had seizures from medication problems. Okay. But, but yeah, I know that I can tell the difference. And at one point, he nearly, Gabriel had just barely walked back into the parents, into Mom and Adam's room, Mom and Adam's room, when he tried it again. Had Gabriel been there, he would have been even more terrified than he already was, because like we said, he was there for the stroke and the seizure, so. Yeah. The, uh, the hot sauce. Whose idea was it to get hot sauce as punishment? Uh, is that your idea? I don't... I honestly don't remember that part. Okay. I don't remember whose it was. I know that before we were using the California, we were using ghost pepper sauce. So. And where, where did these sauces come from? Um, I think it was... It was either Amazon or Walmart apps. Did you ever go to the store and buy anything? No, we didn't ever. Did you ever order any of those yourself? Or who was ordering the hot sauce? My mother is, but she would ask if I could help her pay for it, which... Okay. Like I said, she's been amazing. She's never demanded money. Yeah. So, I guess I'll message that where she asks you. So I knew that... Right. She wasn't just going... If, right. if I said it not that moment, she would have understood, unlike my father. So the, so the hot sauce on bread, if you ever put hot sauce on bread, was it ever your own decision to put hot sauce on bread? No. Sometimes you were left in charge of the two kids, right? Yes. How often was that that you were in charge? Um, sometimes it was during the mornings where she would go to work, but around three-ish, I would have to go to work myself. She would be home after around six o'clock from work, and at that point she would ask me to have them both go to Gabriel and Timothy to go to their rooms, which, yeah. yeah, for him at that point was the closet, and Gabriel's was downstairs as well. Gabriel would take his tablet, because if there's one thing we both know, it's that he's also very dependent on that. It's something that keeps him calm and collected. So, mom is, when mom's not there, is she monitoring with the cameras? Is that what the cameras in the home are for? Yes. And how does she communicate with you? Uh, text. Text, text. text. From her phone to your phone? Or? Yes. Okay. And how does she communicate with the other kids? Uh, 
Susie alarms because they do have that two that dual way uh, talking, but so she can talk to them through yeah, the camera system. Yes. Yeah, the alarms. Yeah, it's cameras, not alarms. Jesus. Okay. The alarms don't have. <laughs> sorry, you don't have to be sorry. I'm sorry. So I just I can't. So it's, you're she's able to communicate with them that way. She's communicating with you via text. Yes, Timothy doesn't have anything to text with. He does, but I don't think, because he's, we can't, we couldn't trust him on devices, so we couldn't exactly. So you have a uh, hurricane monitor and everything? I do sometimes at some points, yes. I, I will log into the cameras and make sure that I don't have Gabriel's app, because normally before I leave, he's upstairs in her room. He's been like what, that for what a while. Is? Timothy's or Gabriel's? I I don't know about that one honestly. Do you know what app was uh, what app was Timothy's? Uh, the one for his room. I think Mama had that one. I know the one in the bathroom was Blue something B L U and then something else. Okay. And, you and know then the one the in the downstairs area was Tekken. Okay. So wait, there was, was Timothy had his own two in his room? Yes, but that was before we moved him into the closet. Oh, okay. that, the teching was for when he was there, and yeah. it was also when he would get up and have to go to the bathroom before yeah. this whole... Which ones did you know how to log in to? Uh, I don't think I remember the one for the Tekken, but I think the other one was... My sister Millie's name, and then it was two numbers, I think. I don't remember. Okay. When do you think was the last time you got logged into that camera? Um, the it Tekken, it was. Like in the blue. The blue, um. I think it was maybe a couple of days ago. Okay. I don't. So, just. Like, but I after, but I, normally I would, uh, after I would, when I would get ready to head to work, I would log out of it because I could not stand. With my Apple Watch, it was connected to my phone, so whenever that got a notification of, like, Gabriel going to the bathroom, my watch would vibrate during work, it would be annoying. Yeah, that's so, certainly. Okay. So I wouldn't know what was normally going on during the nights. Right. So, I know that when we talked yesterday from your mom, you know, she was lying about some stuff, right? I know that she's a good person, I'm not doubting that at all. Yeah, I mean, we never scared. wanted any of this. But you, you also are, you also noticed, like I know, that some of the things that she was talking to us about weren't the truth, right? About, she said she didn't know there was a camera in the bathroom. But the fact of the matter, she asked you to put the camera in the bathroom, right? Didn't she send you a text message that says, put the, make sure that the camera's in there and, and, and take the shower curtain down so I can see him. Didn't she ask you that the day that the day before he passed away? Yeah. So we talked about some of that stuff. Remember how during the conversation I said, I know this pepper's for it's for punishment. And what did she say? She said, oh, I didn't know anything about that. Right? Why do you think she's saying those things? Why do you think she's she doesn't want to appear like a bad person. She doesn't want to be the bad guy in this. We never wanted any of this. We want we we want him to be healthy. I know that for a fact. We just we should have been so much. We should, I, I should have at least put my foot down on something. But you, it's know. not that I'm afraid of her. I I can't fear her because she doesn't. She's okay. not the type to instill fear. Yeah. I don't know if that's also what caused him to sometimes lie about things as well. Was that he still had this fear of dad, and then he thought she would be the same. Yeah, that could very well be the case. She's not. She's nothing like him. That much I know. She's. Right. she's but but she knows that you shouldn't be using hot sauce as a punishment, right? She knows better than that, and you know better than that too, right? Yeah. yeah I think that anybody with some common sense knows that hot sauce is not something used to punish a child for for eating food that they're not supposed to eat, or for disrespect, or for not following orders. We know those things aren't okay. I know that. We've we've tried so many different things. We just were running out of options of 
trying to find a punishment that would actually work. And even that did nothing. Right. And we still kept trying, though. I don't know why. So you have the hot sauce. Tell me about the handcuffs. I know that, once again, she took no blame for that, right? I mean, did she put it all on? She put it all on you. She said that that was your idea and that those were yours and that you did those things. But I think that's not the truth from what I read on here. What's the real truth about that? We would have him against the wall at some points and he would try to move. And at one point we'd actually put motion sensors on him to stop that. But on him himself? Yeah, like they were vibrator. They would okay. sense any sort of vibrations. Yeah. But the thing is, he'd learned to trick them by moving so slow. Or they'd be on his door and they'd be moving so slow yeah. that it wouldn't set it off. So you'd get away with stuff. Okay. So... So you're saying standing still, was that like a punishment that he was forced to stand On the still? wall, yeah. Against the wall. He was, was, that, was that regular that he had to do that? Like how, how often was he having to stand against the wall? Um, since two weeks ago, it wasn't very often. Okay. Just because he couldn't physically stand against the wall anymore? No, it was... Uh, I guess that part that just didn't work because... If he wouldn't set it off when he was against the wall, he would then, like, it, it'd be on his, um, it'd be on a belt around him. He'd stuff it in his pocket and then just sit down on the ground or lay down and stay like that. So, so he was punished by trying to make him stand, but then he would lay down. Did yeah. you guys ever wake him up on purpose because he wasn't supposed to be sleeping? Yeah, and we also know one thing about him was that if he slept during the day, he was going to be up all night. Okay. So you wouldn't let him sleep during the day, essentially? If he wanted maybe an hour long or two hour nap, we would. But anything longer, we knew that it would start screwing with his actual sleeping. So who's monitoring this all the time? Like, who's making sure he's not sleeping during the day? Who's making sure he stands against the wall? Um... When my mother was at work, she'd have me log in before she'd leave. I'd come upstairs and go back to sleep on the couch. I'd set an alarm normally for 10.30 to 11.30 so that I could wake up and be up to keep things going around the house, keep everything in order. Okay. So, she never did any of this to be harsh. She I'm was... Listen, I'm, I'm in no way questioning whether your mom cared or any of those things. I'm not. But the reality is we, we just have to talk about how we got to this point yeah. and how these decisions were made. So I, I, think I don't want you to think yes. that. We I, also did stop the leg cuffs, yeah. I think, a while ago because we noticed that his ankles were swelling. So we stopped that because we didn't want his legs to become yeah. irreparable. How, how, how often were you guys putting leg cuffs on him before that? Um... Was that something like at night to stop him from moving around, or what was it for? Uh, I think we did it once or so. Once, maybe twice at night. One, like, I don't know, one time. I don't know. I'm, I'm so, so lost. I just don't know what to do. What about handcuffs or zip ties? What did you guys use those for? The zip ties were easier to fasten the vibration alarms to his belt during the day. Yeah. Or to put it on his wrist, not too tight work. And I would make sure, after the first time we did it, I would make sure to cut off the end of the zip ties because I had them loose. And then he decided to tighten them to where they were nearly cutting off circulation. Yeah. That's so cool. after that point, I myself, when I was told to put him in the zip ties, I'd grab a pair of scissors and snip off the ends to make sure that he couldn't tighten it to where it was cutting anything off. Were you guys ever zip tying his hands together? Uh, his hands? I I think we did once when we had a, like a pair of them that could, the zip cuffs. Okay. But again, I'd cut those off to make sure that be tight. he wouldn't tighten yeah. them. Yeah, because what was that for? Why would you use those to on him? Normally we have him do this. It was something that my 
I'm not sure if it was my father or my mother back when they were together, but when we were put in time out, we'd be told to do this. And so sometimes though, he'd try and do stuff like this and, or just try and put his hands down or down by his side. So we do that to keep them up. Yeah. How long do you think that goes on for? Um, I think the zip ties, the cuffs, probably when we first used them, it was when I would leave, when I would get ready to leave for work, I'd put them on, do the whole snipping, and then when mom would get home, she'd grab the scissors and cut them off immediately. Yeah. How long are we talking? Is this for a couple hours, eight hours, ten hours? Uh... Normally the maximum was three, okay. because when I worked in the, normally at that point, I think I was only working evening and closing shifts. Yeah. It would be 4.30 or, or 4 o'clock that I'd need to be there, so in order to get there, I would have to leave an hour before to actually make it on time. Right. But, uh, and we, we'd act, we'd put the vibration alarms on there, but then, again, we stopped that after okay. the zip ties, because with the chains, or the chain parts of the cuffs, I think they would rattle to where, yeah. if you tried to move, it would still set them off, even with the whole slowness. Yeah. Tell me about the night before. I know that you said you got home at two. Yeah. Let's talk about you know, kind of what really happened that night, because I know that... I did take my meds. He was in his room. I didn't think to check. I should have thought. I should have seen, right. made sure he was at least okay. That he was yeah. that he was breathing. I don't. He could have. He could have been gone by the time I had already gotten home. Right. So when you first talked to us and then you talked to the police, you know, you said he was on his bunk bed, right? Yeah. But that's not the truth. No. Okay. He was in that closet that's right there by the bunk bed. Yeah. Okay. And then your mom had. Text you that early in the night, or how do you know that he was in there? It's, I guess at that point it was just something I would already know because I have a slight problem. It's not like a problem problem, just a small sort of OCD with the light switches. Okay. So I go upstairs and I take my meds, and normally the light switches by the back door I want them down, and then when I come over to the stairs. Normally when I'd flip it down, the light in the dining room would turn on. So I'd go to the stairs and flip it to turn the light on for the stairs and the ones in the dining room down, off. Go downstairs and then flip that switch to get the stairs off and then the one in there would turn on. And that was how I would know he wasn't in the bed. Oh. And then go and turn the ones off at the start of the hall and then turn off the light with the switch by my bedroom. So you know he's not in the bed? Yes. So you, you you told us that you heard him snoring, is that, was that a lie? Yeah. And did, did you come up with that on your own, or did somebody ask you to say that he was in the bed? Uh, it's okay. I know. It's okay. I feel so guilty, like, I could have done something at any point in this. But you're not. You're his brother. You yeah. have a mother that's telling you what to do. And so, I understand why you feel the way that you do, but at the same time, you have to look at it. You, you, you think that your mother's telling you to do what's best for him, right? That's what you've been telling me since yeah. you came Yeah, and I know she, she wants what's best for all of us. So, I'm back to my question. Did somebody ask you to say that he was in the bunk bed? I came up with that on my own because I didn't want to. I feel so guilty. You came up with that on your own? Yeah, because... So tell me what really happened in the morning then, because obviously what was told to us wasn't the truth. What really, what really happened when you guys, somebody found him or... I woke up and I had been grabbing my shoes and it was, it was at that point that it basically all played out like we said. The whole morning thing was exact. He was he wasn't breathing in the closet. It was the closet though. 
We had to get him out of the closet to try and resuscitate. Him. So it's you and your mother who tried to get him out of the closet? We did get him out. Okay. And we tried to resuscitate yeah, was him. It, was it, did, who noticed him first? You or My you? mother. Okay. Did she have asked you via text to check on him on the way up? That's not what happened. She said, hey, can you check on him on your way upstairs? Do you remember that text message at all? No. Okay. I, there might have been one that I didn't see, but... Okay. So you guys pulled him out of the closet. We tried to resuscitate him. We gave him rescue breaths. His breath smelled horrible. I thought maybe he might have still been capable of re being resuscitated because his mouth was still wet. Yeah. And so I thought maybe it had just been recent so we could, we could do something. When you were at work, right, you came home at about two, does that sound right, or is that... Yeah, we, that was true, because, okay. what was it, it was the day after the 4th of July or so? I don't, what's today's date? Yeah, today's the 7th. This was the 7th. Yeah, it was on the 5th, so... Well, it's the 5th when you were at work, and you yes. come home in the morning of... Yes, so. and, yeah, some of the servers had, there were still people in the lobby, and we had to finish that off. I'm the general utility, so I have to break down the machine, clean the outside, clean the floors. Gotcha. So, when you guys pull him out of the closet, like, does he have clothes on at that point, or is he in a diaper, or what's that state? He had a shirt. I think we had put him in pants, or sweatpants, but, I don't know, maybe some point in the night he took them off. I don't know about when that. When you say we, you weren't there, though, when you went to bed, right? No. So how would you know if, you, if we put him in sweatpants? Do you see what I'm My, saying? Yeah. So do you know if he had pants on or not when he was No, honestly. But he didn't have them when we got him out. He had the diaper on, at least. So he has the diaper on. You're saying that he has a shirt on? What shirt did he have on? The very same sweatshirt that we found him in. Because obviously we didn't want him to get cold. Or I don't think Mama wanted him to get cold. I'm pretty sure she texted me about that. I'm not sure. Okay. So you guys pull him out. Does he have pants on or no pants on? No, no. And when we get there, he has pants on? Yeah, she had me put them on. She asked you to put pants on? What yeah. was that for? I, I don't know. I just... And so you guys, at that time, she decides that she's going to lie to him and say that he was in the bunk bed? I don't understand. I don't know. Clearly she doesn't just want to seem like she's bad. That she, We never, we weren't neglecting him. And even if that's what it, if it somehow ended up like that, it was never intentional. Right. Well, what you're saying, I mean, if, you, if we talk, right, there's, there's all these things where you're like, she didn't want to seem like this, she didn't want to seem like this, she didn't want to seem like this. Did you know that it all seems like that, right? Yes, I know. It does. Know. And, and he clearly was neglected because he died from it, right? The reality is that he was. That's why we're here talking today. So, he was very much neglected. The fact that, you know, she had asked you to put hot sauce on his private parts. Do you she had that? A, she asked, but I never did. I never you did. never did that? No. Okay. And she had asked you to put hot sauce directly into his mouth. Did you do that? Yes. Is that is that on the 5th, the day kind of leading up to all this stuff? Yeah. How much hot sauce did you put in there? Um... Whose idea was that to put that hot sauce in there? Hers. And what was the purpose of that? Again, she thought the whole unresponsive was an act. She thought it was an act. Which yeah. clearly, very clearly it wasn't, right? Yeah. Where, is the hot sauce that you used, is that the one that was in the bathroom, or is it a different one? That was the one in the bathroom, yeah. Okay. So. How do you feel about lying during this? Is that, how does that make you feel? I, I just hate it. I, I know she doesn't want to be the bad guy. She never wanted this. We right. we loved him so much. I just I don't think I, it's about I don't think it's about love at this point. I think it's about not knowing what to do, not knowing how to handle the situation. We didn't. From we you, didn't know you know how to do anything. We didn't. You know, I don't think you knew. I've never. The worst punishment I've ever gotten in Oklahoma. It was my father. He. He spanked me with a belt so hard that my butt was bruised. Yeah. And at another point, they had me do wall sits. 
he had me do wall sits while holding two cans of chicken noodle soup out like this. And that was when I was in high school. I could hardly get to school the next couple of days because I had to walk and my limbs were so stiff and filled with lactic acid that it was just painful to try and even get across the street. And again, bruises on my backside to where it was really hard to sit at school. What other kinds of things? Did you guys ever put hot sauce in your mouth? Did you ever put hot sauce like in his eyes or anything like that? Not that I know of. I think at one point he may have, after he'd eaten, he had forgotten to wash his hands and rubbed his eye. Okay. I know at you, one point I done you this. Put, did you ever directly put hot sauce into his eye? No, I remember, but when that happened, I helped him wash out his eyes yeah. to make sure that it wouldn't sting so much. Or it wouldn't sting at all, I'm not sure if it helped or not. But he was, they said it was good after. I think that was a couple of weeks ago. What else can you tell me about what happened there, pal? Um, what other types of punishments did you guys have for him? Um, I know at one point that he was actually refusing to eat. We would give him his food and he would just be stubborn and sit there and just slowly Slowly, it was regular bread, nothing else on it. Just chow down to the point where it was basically he was trying to waste time he could be upstairs. Where did he spend most of his time? In his room. We, we wouldn't make him stand. Sometimes we would have him kneeling, like on his knees, like this, facing one of the corners. But what was that for? For punishment? I don't even know what it was for at this point. I'm not sure. But where did he spend most of his time? It was in that room. The I closet, think the, the closet there? Yeah, I think less than three or so weeks ago we were we've been having him try and do schoolwork. Yeah. But the thing is that he's just at this point, I'm slightly curious on how he's even in, he was even in sophomore year. He was supposed to be a junior next year, but I don't, we weren't sure if we were going to be able to do that because he was just, he was flunking everything. And my mother graded fairly. She used the actual answers that were on a website or in textbook of some sort. Yeah. Back in Oklahoma, he was also even destructive at school, destroying textbooks, desks, really anything, I don't, just, so he was a destructive that, child. And that this is all that happened, right, where, yeah. you, do you and your mom agree to tell us the same story that he was in the bunk bed, or how does that happen? You couldn't have both just possibly made up the same story. No. So what happened? told you what to say. Because why? Did she tell you why? Does it look bad for you guys? It's not just that. We loved him. She... Does she, this, can I ask you this? Like straight up? You keep saying love, love. Do you feel like this was love? That he's dead now because he couldn't eat food? Does that feel like love to you? No. He's dead because he couldn't eat. No. And I don't know anybody that thinks that's love. What I think's happening is your mom's convinced you that she's this perfect person and she's asking you to do all these things that are literally killing your brother. I know she's not perfect. How is that love? How is love how is love ice baths? How is love how is love handcuffing and how is love restricting movement 
and I always love hot sauce in the mouth and only eating bread. Like, what if you're? What if you only got to eat bread? How would you feel? What if you only got to eat bread with hot sauce? Would you eat? No. You're pretty skinny already. It wouldn't take you this, long. This to is eat. this is my natural weight. I have an overactive metabolism, but it wouldn't take you long to be very much skin and bones if all you got to eat was bread and hot sauce. Because how could you eat it? And how could you feel good about eating? Was he throwing up stuff that he was eating? Forcefully, he would force himself to, to get it back up. Yeah, when? Like recently, in the last couple weeks? Yeah, he would force himself, honestly. You ever think it's because maybe it was painful? It's hot sauce. It's not like that just goes away. Did you ever complain about pain, stomach pain? Pain from using the bathroom? Not that I know of, no. I do know that my mother, she's not perfect, but she's not a bad person. We were, we... Do you know, can I ask you this? Do you know of any good people who starved a child to death? Tell me of one that you know. Tell me of one that you know. That's a child who has a lot of problems, right? That's not a child that's taking care of themselves. They can't take care of themselves because you guys are restricting where he can go and what he can do. And if he does something wrong, you're punishing him. By giving him ice baths and hot sauce and only feeding him bread. How is that? How is that a loving person? How is that a loving mother? You know what that sounds like to me? And honestly, the worst mother I've ever met in my entire life is what it sounds like to me. I know. I know. But she's not. Maybe she wasn't to you. Maybe she was a good mother to you. And maybe she wasn't to Gabriel. It sounds like she's a very good mother to Gabriel. But to one of the three child, one of the three children, she didn't care. She you can say it. you can say it if you want. She she starved him to death because he wouldn't stop taking food. Well, maybe he's taking food because he wants to live. Have you ever thought about that? Yes. Maybe he's stealing food so that he can survive. He's dead because he didn't get food. I know that. Well, that's not anybody's fault but your mother's, and you can try to take the some of the blame if you want. But it's her fault, because every single time I see a message in here, it's her telling you what to do. And she puts you right in the middle of this. She puts you right in the middle of this, where it looks like some of the stuff's your idea. And, and it actually looks like in some of these things, that you kind of enjoy it. That you kind of enjoy punishing him for doing wrong things. Do you feel like you kind of enjoy punishing him for that stuff? No. Maybe not that he was in pain, but that you were, you were in charge and you got to tell him, you can't do that, go do this, this is your punishment. Did you like some of that stuff? No. Did she like some of that stuff? No. How come you guys are laughing and joking about it sometimes? With smiley faces and... Like, if why? it's the upside down smiley face... Yeah, what's that mean? It's the opposite of happiness. Okay. It means that I'm really angry. Okay. And she's kept me calm, like I said. Because he made you mad a lot, right? It sounds yes. like he made you mad a lot. But when you look back on it... Do you think he really could control it? Clearly he had some, he needed help. He didn't need punishment. He needed some help. He couldn't make those decisions or do those things on his own. We, you saw it over and over and over and over again, right? What was your mother's choice? Her choice was more punishment, less food, more punishment. The only food you get is bread. And the only bread you get sometimes is with the hottest hot sauce that we can find. That's all you get to eat. There's no way that you can look at yourself and think that's okay. And that your mom's good for that. She was doing what's best for him. How could that be best for him? Why couldn't it be why couldn't it be a, a piece of chicken that's that's cooked? Why couldn't you eat that? Why does it have to be bread with hot sauce? It's not about punishment. You need food to survive. You need food to live. He didn't get to live because of that. Because of what you guys did. And, and I'm sitting here talking to you because I think that way more of it has to do with your mom than you. I don't think that you're this bad person that was out here doing these things. But you're also still not telling me the whole truth about what happened that night. About the night that he ended up dead. That there's more to that story. I've told you everything that I have. I don't want to live a life where I regret the fact that I hid somehow, 
something. I've told you everything I know. How do you feel about living a life where you hid that your brother wasn't eating from society? That you hid that your brother was dying? How do you feel about that? I hate myself, okay? If I could take his place right now, if I could give him back his life, I'd do it in a dead gum heartbeat. Did your mom ever do anything like this to you? No. Not even back when he, she and my father were together. The punishments were him. When did this stuff kind of start? Sounds like to me it started after your stepdad was out of the house. Because too much you took would take advantage of that situation. We were all stressed. And he would take advantage of that. He anything he can find to take advantage of almost his entire life, except for I think when he was still a baby. He would find some way to take advantage of whatever he can. Was there ever food restrictions when is it Eric? Or Dad? Yeah. Oh, Eric. Oh, uh, not Eric. Um, Adam? Adam? Adam stepped at you, correct? Yes. Was there ever food restriction with bread only when he was in the house? No, because... Was the house messy like it is now? Disgusting. It wasn't as messy. We... With all the stress that's been going on, we just... We've had moments where, yeah, we could get it cleaned up, but... Did your mom feel bad at all about giving him just bread? Yes. I uh, saw some locking him in the closet. And yes, she hates it. it. And she hates it. She never once enjoyed it. Ice baths. Ice baths. She gave him ice bath on the day that he died, right? Getting up to it. And she wanted him to sleep in the tub. That's what I read. Did that happen? Did he sleep in the tub? No. He didn't. No. He didn't die in that bathtub and you guys dragged him into that closet and waited for the morning to call the police? No. That's not what happened. No. It's not. Do you think she did that? Do you think that message is just a little bit suspicious? That she sends you at just about midnight that says, he's, he's in the closet, I had to drag him in there. You don't think he was already dying or dead at that point? I was working, I didn't read that message until basically I'd gotten home. But do you think she sent that for a reason? Why would she send that? Doesn't it seem like maybe he was already dead? That she put him in there so that he could wake up and have died in his sleep? Because she can't call the police when he's in an ice bath and he freezes and he dies. Not freezes per se, but he dies in the bath. And she dragged him in there. Did she talk to you all about that? Did she tell you the truth about what really happened? I don't know at this point. She did, right? I don't, no. I don't want you to lie to me. No, I don't know if he died in there. I don't know where. I, I, I remember, I know that when, it, when I got up, he was gone. And when was the last time you saw him alive? The fifth. What time? Ballpark? Um, I think because of my bike, Mama had to come pick me up and drop me off at work. So I was very late getting there, but I would let them know beforehand. I know he was alive before I left. You know he was alive when you left for work? Yeah. And you don't really know exactly what he was, but... I think she managed to get there a little bit after six. I managed to get, get to work around 6.35ish. She says to you at 11.49 p.m. on 7.5. She says, please set your alarm for 6 a.m. I ended up dragging him back to a small room. That's talking about the closet. Yeah. Because I wasn't going to risk him having access to the tub or other things overnight. Wasn't he already in the tub? So what do you mean risk him having access to the tub overnight? He's, he's still trying to be... Water. She says he's still trying to be stupid. But I will tell you more tomorrow while I take you to work, describing how many different ways I've proved that he's still faking. 
He's still yes. doing it. The thing was, was that yesterday, ridiculous. I had offered him a pizza roll. Because I was. I wanted to truly test whether he was faking or not. And at first, he didn't He didn't move. I'm like, okay, maybe this is... But then he moved and went to try and grab it. I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know anymore. Well, he wasn't faking it, right? Because he died. He wasn't thinking it unless he unless your mom did something to him to kill him. Do you think she did no, that? No, of course not. Outside She's of not feeding her food and punishing him for months, that's what killed him, right? Or did she did she hold a, a pillow over his mouth and stuff? No, him? of course not. She's not. A, she wouldn't. Did she hold that. him by the throat and squeeze it until he died? No. So what killed him was not having food, not having access to food and malnutrition for months. How long did this go on for? You feel you feel good at all about any of this stuff? No, of course not. I can't, can't, right? I can't. I can't even live with myself. But you, how do you feel about over and over and over again defending your mother about how good she is? Do you feel like that's the truth anymore? Because I'm quite disgusted by her. I'm disgusted by her. She never wanted this. Then she what? Is how, how smart is your mom? She's incredibly intelligent. Yeah. Very cool, loudy. Right. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought? How can a woman that's this smart, this intelligent, graduate from law school, how could she not know what's happening? How could she think this is fake? How does she not know she's starving? How does she not see that he's wasting away? And you here, you're telling me that you've got some, some mental health issues, but you graduated from high school, and it's very obvious to you that he's, mal he's got malnutrition, right? It's very obvious to you, but your mom here's not seeing that, and she's a she's a law school graduate, and she's very smart. Do you see what I'm looking at here? She's a liar. She's lied to you about so much stuff. At some point, you need to stand up for yourself and realize she's the manipulator. She's the liar. She put you in this spot. She did this to your brother, using you. Do you not see that? That she used you to do this to your brother. Your mother used you. She's so smart. She's smarter than any of us here. She's smarter than me. She's smarter than any detective here. She's smarter than our chief of police here. She's smarter than all of us. And, and we're supposed to believe she didn't know what was happening. No, she didn't want him around anymore because he was too much of a problem. You know that's the truth. You can look back at it and see that, can't you? She didn't want him around anymore because he was too much work. That's the truth. And the second you start to believe that and understand that, then I think that's the time you can move forward in this case. Until you believe that, until you understand that, you're never moving forward from this. This isn't an accident. This didn't just happen. Your mom knew exactly what was happening to him, that he was wasting away. You saw it, didn't you? You saw it happening right in front of you. It was never intentional. From your, from for you, or for her? Is she smart or is she not smart? She's highly intelligent. Then how is this not intentional? She thought. What, what did she think was going to happen then? He was just going to be good, and all of a sudden he was going to start behaving and doing everything she said because she didn't feed him food. I don't know. What did she think was going to happen? I don't know. I don't know what exactly what happens. What she thought was going to happen. At some point, he wasn't going to wake up. She never wanted him dead. She loved him. That's love to you? Everything that we talked about is love? I... How? Who do you love in your life? My family. Have you ever thought about starving them? No, of course not. Have you ever thought about not giving them food as a punishment? No, of course not. Have you ever thought about giving them hot sauce so that they would listen? No. Or if they would do what was told. You somehow don't think those things are okay. Do you think those things are okay? No. Because everybody knows they're not. Except the smartest woman in the room. She's the one person that doesn't know that's not okay. You're joking, right? No. The smartest woman in the room is the one that doesn't know you can't do those things. No, it's all very intentional. The smartest woman in the room knows... She graduated second year class from law school. She graduated with honors from college and from law school. But she doesn't know that not giving your kid food is going to make him sick and die. 
we gave him food. She even told me to make sure that he had a good amount of... When it, she would tell me on, cert, on random days. They were never consecutive, I don't believe, what, for the hot sauce punishment. But other than that, it was always bread and rice. At one point, she even asked me to put some broth. I think that she wanted chicken, but we didn't have any, so I used beef for some rice. She she cared. She never wanted this. We didn't. But she was her pictures of him looking dead, right? Looking almost dead. Yeah. That's your brother. Yeah. That's June 13th, less than a month ago. You sent this picture to her, and you said, he's looking like a skeleton, we need to give him more food. But you guys didn't give him more food over the next couple weeks. You guys gave him less and more punishment, and less bread, and more bread with hot sauce. That's what really happened. You reached out to her and said, this is scary looking, right? You probably thought, he can barely walk. You sent a picture of his legs, right? You sent this picture of his legs to your mother. Right here. You sent this to her. And what'd you say? Something along the lines of, no wonder he can barely stand up or walk. Look at that. And your mother, being smart and, and intelligent and the smartest woman in the room, she didn't do anything about that. Didn't think about taking him to the doctor. Didn't think about, like, we have to give him some more food, like, seriously now. Instead, what do you think she did? She gave him less and more punishment. Until what? He ends up dead. And what did she tell the police? He was always wearing baggy clothes, so I didn't notice anything until last night. Another just blatant lie. Another blatant lie. If this was all an accident, why would she lie to us? If this was all an accident, why wouldn't she just say, we, we were having a really hard time with him. I thought he was okay. No, she knows that he looked like this. That he looked like this. Look at his face right there. That's not who your brother looked like, is it? No. He didn't look like that. Does that look like it? That looks like somebody in a casket that you see at a funeral. That's what that looks like. And it's sickening and disgusting. And you sent this picture to her too, didn't you? You sent that to her, didn't you? Yeah. You sent that to her on July 5th. Right before the, the, the day leading up to him being found dead. Does he look like he's okay right there? No. Why'd you send that picture? I was concerned. He, yeah, once again, you're not the smartest person in the room and you're concerned. Did she do anything about it? No, you know what she said? He's going to sleep in the bath all night tonight. He's sleeping in the bath all night tonight. The smartest woman in the room. He's getting the bathtub all night for punishment. Make sure the shower curtain's away so I can see him. And what happens later on that night? At some point between the time this is picture sent and the time you wake up in the morning, he dies. Because he's alive right here, right? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. He's alive. Did she tell you to snap him and see if he blinks? Or is that a different time? That was... Is that this time or a different time? You smack him in the face to see if he's faking it? I was trying to see what was going on, trying to see if he would even respond if what was going on with him. I was Because to I'm you, scared. not the smartest person in the room, to you, you already know. This isn't okay. This is a dying person. This is your brother dying. <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. This is your brother. And he's, he's almost dead. Another and, thing. And she, she I kept him. setting him up. Yeah. And I would come back a little later and I would notice that he would he actually had moved himself back down. I wasn't sure if it was intentional or if he was trying to clear up his airway maybe. But but just move it. What is that supposed to mean? Well he must be okay because he moved a little bit? 
That's where we're at. I wasn't He's sure. He's so that. far gone that you you're like questioning if he moves a little bit, he must be okay. Come on. I wasn't no. sure. Where did that stuff come from? Where did that come from? Didn't your mother send you messages that said, I saw him move? I saw him. Did she send that to you? Yes. Then what does that mean to her? That it's fake? Is this fake to you? No. Is your brother lying on the floor dead? Is that fake to you? No. You know who it didn't matter to at all? You know who I didn't see shed a single tear the whole day I was there? Your mom. Did you see her cry a real tear? Yes. I saw a whole bunch of fake. You know what my job is to see? Fake. You know what I saw a whole bunch of? Fake. Because at the end of the day, this, your brother gone, that's a problem for her that's gone. She never was trying to solve this problem. She was never trying to make him into this perfect person because she's smart enough to know that isn't going to happen. He's never going to be you. He's never going to be Gabriel because he has too many problems. He's not going to be that. She's smart enough to know that. That's how we ended up here. The smartest woman in the room took advantage of you. And she asked you to do these things over and over and over again. And this is the woman you're sitting here saying she cares so much. Does she really though? She asked you to handcuff your brother, pour hot sauce in his mouth. She asked you to pour hot sauce on his penis. Your mother asked you to do those things because she cares so much. She puts you in that spot. And now you're right in the middle of an investigation in which your brother died. And this is criminal. This is a crime. Did your brother deserve to die? No. Should he be dead right now? No. Is he dead for... by the choices of others? Yeah. Who made those choices? Who made the choices for him to be dead right now? Did you make some of those choices? No. Who made those choices? Mama. Yeah. She did, didn't she? That's what's real. That's what's know. real. Now, did you do some of the things she asked you to do? Yes. Absolutely, you did. Yes, I thought yeah. I, I and does that put you knew what was best. Does that put you in the wrong? Doing those things? Does it? It does. It puts you in the wrong. Yeah. It does. Because... But you thought she knew it was best, you just said I heard you say it. I, knew, I thought she knew it. I thought maybe, maybe she said, I thought maybe it would, something, somewhere would change. Because she's smart, right? And she knows what she's talking about. And she loves you all of you. And she cares all about all of you. But when you really step back and you look at yourself and Gabriel and Timothy, we're all three of you treated the same. No. Was one of you treated like who really cares? Who really cares? Punish him, punish him, punish him, punish him. Ice bath, hot sauce, handcuffs, closet. He lived in a closet. You said he spent most of his day in a closet, peeing on himself, pooping on himself, eating only bread. Sometimes only with hot sauce on it. It's the hottest hot sauce you can get your hands on. That's life. He's probably relieved that he's dead. He's probably relieved because that's torture. He was tortured by you guys for months. Tortured. Why? Because he was different than you guys? Because he couldn't follow directions? Because he couldn't follow your mom's rules? Is that why? He stole food? Is it that big of a deal? Is, is this food worth killing somebody over? No. That's what happened here. Over stealing food and not following rules. You said that your dad's very controlling. You know who's also very controlling? Your mom's controlling you without you even knowing it. That's narcissistic. Your mom controlled you and you had no idea. You thought all this stuff you were doing was for, the, for, for your brother. This is going to be better for my brother. This is what's best for my brother. Those are the things you came in here saying. Is that real? I don't know what is or isn't anymore. It doesn't seem real to me. It doesn't seem real to me at all. Did you ever hit your brother? I did. Yeah. But every...
every time I would come back, I would apologize. The bruises on him were not me. I know that much. If, if it was anywhere, it was here. And never, there was a spot here, but that was from when he was a child. I think, I'm not sure which parent it was in his crib. He was laid there while his head was still fresh. Okay. And so that scar on the back of his head is, that's an old scar. Very, basically birth. When was the last time you hit him? Probably the fifth when I was trying to see if he would respond. Okay, and where was that at? That was while he was, I think, in the tub. But where did you hit him at? Like on the side of his face? Yeah. Did you ever, like, go smack him or what kind of hits? It was sometimes this, and I think once or twice it was... But it wasn't like full force, but it was like to try to see if he would respond. Did you ever punch him in the head? No. Because there's some evidence that somebody hit him in the head pretty hard. Where? Well, is his, is his skull? Because I, I know that that would never, I would never try to actually injure him. At those well, points, what, how, did was, it how did he get that injury on his head? Did you hit him? It's a little harder than you maybe wanted to. It's okay, man. Yeah, I think I remember I kept trying to pick him up after he after I got him out of the closet, and I think at one point he actually scratched where it, my I pulled away, yeah. and he fell, and it, it, I think it happened several times, like he was trying to get out of my reach. Yeah. When was kind of the last time you like really hit his head hard or something? Um. I think it was, I was trying to get him in, into the bath to, for the ice bath thing. Uh, and it? Yeah, okay. he sort of, I thought he squirmed, but maybe it was like something else. I don't know, but he slipped out of my hand and hit his head on the ground. But What part of his head did he hit? Um, it, was it the sides? I don't, I don't know the exact region because... By the time I heard the thud, I had, I was literally about to turn around because I had to stop for a moment to fucking breathe. I was frustrated. I was yeah. listen. Let me so tell you this. I I never wanted any of that. Let me stop for a Okay. But the injury to his head, that's not what killed him. Okay. Okay. But what what killed him was not eating. But when we talk about this injury to his head, I just need to know the truth of what really yeah. happened. Because what you're telling us doesn't make a lot of sense. What really happened to his head? I, the, the, the medical people, there's a medical examiner in Kalamazoo, they're like, that's not, that isn't what caused it, but that was there. They just I noted that. So I'm just curious what really happened. I don't know. What just Those are like a hard punch or something. When you're mad at him, I did you? If, you if I ever was smacking over the head, it was with an open palm. I never... Close my fist. Maybe like on this one day when you went? No. There's never one time where you hit him in the head? No. With a fist? I would long to, but I would I would walk away because I knew that I would, if I did something like that, I would not only regret it, but if I knew that if something like this had happened, that I had never even been able to apologize. Right. So what, where did he hit it? You got to remember. You said it was just a couple days ago. Yeah. Where did he hit his head at? I think each time. I'm not sure. I know at one point, I think once it was on the side, another time it was the other side. I'm not sure if there was any in the back, but. Because. Okay. Where's he? Where are you hitting his head? Like, normally it was right. Here for me, okay. just uh, either either aside a little. Remember a time where you were so mad that maybe you lost a little bit and hit him harder than that because this was a this is a serious injury. I wouldn't hurt him. Not like that. that. Not, no, not, 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 not even if it was on purpose. I wouldn't. If it was that accidental that it happened, I don't think I would have even realized at this point until someone had probably told me. Did you ever see your mom hit? No. She no. never raised a hand to him that I know of. Okay. Did she ever ask you to hit him? Or ever ask you to punch him physically? No. I heard of him like, no. or anything like that? No. So, this, 
what was, what's your best guess on how this injury happened to the head? This is a severe injury, so it's not it's not this. It's not a slap, not even a hard slap. The thing is that when he was on the ground, his head would constantly lull to the side. So if it was... After or during? After? How long was it like that where it lulled to the side? After he was head or... And barely moments after this, this he fell. Buddy, uh, is it going or just says that live? Okay. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Uh, hey, everybody. I uh, just figured I'd send a quick check for y'all, but um, we're doing good right now. We, I just dozed off on the couch unintentionally. I forgot to give a quick check for today, but, um, yeah. oh, when I can't actually get in contact with you guys, I'll probably post a quick check like this. For those of you who aren't aware, um, my little brother has passed away, and my mother is currently in the custody of, well, I don't, I'm not sure if it's, it's a lot to deal with, but right now we're doing good. We're we're fine. But if I can't actually like Facebook you guys like with live because I don't have my phone and I don't know how to access my stepfather's, I'll post a quick check to let you guys know everything that's going on. If you have any questions or anything, just comment them down below, and I'll see if I can answer them in the next uh, quick check. Just keep supporting and pray that the two of us get through this. But, um, I guess I uh, don't really have much that I can say right now. Uh, but uh, in the comments, I'll leave a little something if you guys want to. Uh, know what's going on. There we go. Anyway. Well, I gotta go and get to bed back to bed. I'll probably post another quick check tomorrow. So Doodles.
Eventually, both Paul Ferguson and Shonda van der Ark were charged with child abuse and murder. However, Paul struck a deal with the state and they were happy to drop the murder charges so long as he testified against Shonda in court. At the end of 2023, that's exactly what he did. Although the prosecution, in his own words, didn't like Paul Ferguson, he couldn't argue with the fact that his testimony would support their case of murder against Shonda van der Ark. If you take a look at the relatively quick trial, you'll notice that Shonda had a weak defense. The state had a mountain of evidence against her. Paul's testimony was the cherry on top. The state of Michigan versus Shonda van Ark, count one, charging open murder involving the death of Timothy Ferguson. We find her guilty of first degree felony murder. Count two, first degree child abuse. We find her Guilty of first degree child abuse. Alright, thank you. It's a sentence of the court. First as to count two, child abuse in the first degree. Court sentences you 50 years to 100 years in prison. Credit for 575 days. The court is exceeding guidelines in this case. Uh, the court finds that the amount of torture that I've indicated uh, in terms of the long-term suffering that Mr. Vander, or excuse me, Mr. Ferguson, Timothy went through uh, justifies on a reasonable grounds to depart from the guidelines. Uh, the used to be the standard was the guidelines that the guidelines didn't take into consideration all the elements. I don't think they would take into consideration the amount of absolute systematic consistent torture uh, that you engaged in here. I think that's enough reasons to justify departing from the guidelines. There's a $68 state cost, $130 crime victim rights assessment. As to count one, uh, felony murder, it's a sentence of the court you serve a term within the Michigan Department of Corrections for the rest of your natural life without parole. Again, there's credit for 575 days that you've already served. There's a $68 state cost. Uh, the crime victim assessment fee has already been assessed and the court is going to assess a $450 public defender fee. And so, Shonda van der Ark was found guilty on all the charges that were placed against her. She'll remain in prison for the rest of her life, unless she wins an appeal and manages to overturn her conviction, which I highly doubt. Paul Ferguson has yet to be sentenced as of when I'm recording this video, and even though he pleaded guilty to the child abuse charges and helped the prosecution, the judge still warned him that he would be facing a lengthy prison sentence for acting as the enforcer for Shonda.